Hello. Oh, hope you all had a lovely weekend. It's now Monday and it's just gone 8 o'clock here in the UK. So, I don't know what time it is where you are, but a lot earlier than 8 o'clock. Anyway, what did you all do the weekend? I had my grandson, which I love having. I love having my grandson. Next time I have my grandson and my granddaughter. So, that would be good. I like it when I've got both of them. It tires me out, but I like it. So, anyway, I hope you all had a good weekend anyway. Um, right. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, sensitive subject at the moment. I've got nothing to worry about. My channel isn't big enough. <laughs> right. But um, some people might have something to worry about. And we're going to look at that in one of the videos I've got to show where Seth comes on a live show and then I've also got like there's a clip I saw today on a YouTube channel so I've, I couldn't find it anywhere I know I've, I've got it somewhere but I couldn't find it so I'm using her channel again to get to show you that one clip and it's interesting Because you remember back at the beginning, but when Chris said, CP said, uh, three dogs hit on Sebastian's scent. And three dogs um, went up to the same place. Yeah? And I kept saying, no, but it was one dog. One dog. Well, actually, it was no dogs. No dogs. They did hit, they, there was, the dogs did go round by one of them big tips, skips they use on the construction sites. And that is why they went to Kentucky, landfill. But we'll hear about that as well. So there's lots to listen to tonight. Both very interesting, what we've got to show you. One is with Seth, when he comes on a YouTube channel, and one is with a neighbour that lives in Kelling Road. That's the road you go up to to get to Stafford Court. That's very interesting, what she tells us there. And I feel bad for the people around there. I really do. I feel really bad for them. Hopefully now it's dying down a bit and not so, people aren't constantly going up there and driving around and taking photos and flying drones. Right? Because it isn't fair on them. They didn't ask for that. But she does clear some... She does bring in that video of the lights again. Now, you know how I said I wasn't going to show that video of the lights? Well, I'm not showing it. I'm not showing it tonight. But she brings that back into the conversation, into the talking point. So we know law enforcement don't tell us everything. They don't have to. And we know they will lie to us. Which we know that, because when they did that last press conference where they, was, they stood at that podium or whatever, and he said that no complaints had been put in about harassment or being followed. Well, we knew that was a lie, because Seth and his searchers had been putting complaints in. You know what I mean? And... Uh, but it was also very telling, that press conference was. Like when the TBI woman said, 
uh, Kite, Chris and Kite were were very cooperative at the beginning, at the beginning, meaning they're not now, they're not so cooperative now. And why is that? Oh, because they've moved down to where? Mississippi, to living at a five-wheeler. But I've also heard something very concerning today. Oh, well, I'm not sure. If, I probably heard over the weekend, but I probably wasn't taking much notice of it because I can look around. So. I was trying to find the post and it was in one of the Facebook pages. And someone put up a post. So it's a bit of a cryptic post. But then someone commented and said, don't worry, Nina, it's only for the summer, summer holidays. So does that mean that Faith has gone to her dad's for the summer holidays? Because I sure hope not. Not while there's a missing child going on. You know what I mean? Surely the courts will not allow that. They've got a missing child, but they're going to allow her, his daughter to go and visit. When he hasn't even been cleared. So, for him to sit there and say they've been cleared, they haven't been cleared. No one's been cleared, not even Seth. And Seth has got a rock-solid alibi. And then you got people going, oh, but you could have paid someone. What with? What with? His sister got a GoFundMe page going to help pay his rent, his bills, and everything else he needed, any help with. Right? While he was not at work, while he was searching for his son. So what money did he have before to pay for someone to go and, I don't know, kidnap his son? You know what I mean? So, and I think people need to lay off Seth. They really do. Right? The last person to see Sebastian, to speak to Sebastian, to have anything to do with Sebastian, was Katie. Now, they said they passed the lie detector test. We don't know that. Law enforcement haven't said anything. You know what I mean? Law enforcement haven't said yes. They passed the lie detector test. They haven't said nothing. Seth did it because he went on, he did it through Nancy Grace. Right. But um, Chris and Kate, we don't know if they passed the test. And we won't know because law enforcement won't tell us. Just alter my mic a bit. That's better. So, we're looking at Sebastian Rogers. And tonight we're talking about Seth. Right, and it's rumour is out there that apparently, it, apparently, this is he sent fifty ceased, ceased and deceased letters. He didn't. He sent six, six, and because one of them he sent the letter to or the email to, however they sent it, right, stood in front of him sort of thing, face to face, or on the phone, and said, oh, I've just earned $20,000 this month from talking about your son. What? And you lot are moaning about Seth having money donated to him, and you got YouTubers out there earning that much money from talking about his son. And then you got other YouTubers who are blackening his name. One 
I don't know who it is. I don't know which YouTuber it is. Uh, apparently, they have a YouTube channel. I don't know. I don't know. If, I've got an idea of who it is, but I'm not sure, so I'm not saying. But apparently, they they um called him the said the worst things you could say about someone about a woman or about a guy. The worst thing you could ever call someone. Right. Yeah, you know, Seth works in law in law enforcement. He works for the criminal um Oh God. For a detention to the you know what I mean? He works for them. He knows the law. And yet they're calling him that. He's like publicly saying that. Now I'm going to have to and I, last time I said this, I said, I'm going to have to go and watch all the YouTube video interviews that CP or KT have done. And I'm sorry, I had to give up. I couldn't watch them all. I think I managed to watch one, two, and a little bit of all the interviews I've done. But... M what I'm doing is, you've got a transcript, you can go in the description, you can click on transcript and it'll bring up everything that is said, but it doesn't tell you who's saying it, you have to read it as, you read it as you see, you watch the video, right, well I'm actually typing it out, and I'm going, like, say Seth talks, uh, Chris talks, Chris types, then I type what he says, then Katie type what she says, whoever the host of the YouTube, whatever they say, you know what I mean? But I'm not joking. I've managed to do two two of his lives, and one that one was, one was with, oh God, I, can't, I can never remember her name. And the other one was with Duchess. And the third one I'm on at the moment is the smiley one. But I'm having trouble. I can't get back into it because I, I just can't listen to that man's voice. If I see any YouTuber saying, oh, CP or Pompano, nope, nope, not watching it. Can't watch it. Because everything that comes out of his mouth is BS. I'm sorry. Can't watch it. Because I noticed the first interview they did with Duchess, it was, Katie was so, so, so upset. But by the time I got round to doing the one with Smiley, I was, no, I'm not happy. They come in guns blazing on Smiley's. They really did. It's like, we're going to get our point across and we're going to get it across straight away. We're not going to have no ifs, no buts. We're going to say what we've got to say. Right? And he was saying about how he won't do an interview with J JLR. Because he don't believe in YouTubers making money now, this is coming from Chris, making money through his stepson being missing. Well, I'm sure that one YouTube channel, it tends to go on a lot. I mean, it hasn't been on for a while, but it used to go on a lot. I'm sure she made quite a bit of money out using your stepson's name, CP. Because I believe that YouTuber is one of the YouTubers that probably got the cease, cease and desist letter from Seth, I believe. Well, he said there was three who lived in Sumner County. Three. I mean, I know two YouTubers, and the third one is a YouTuber, but she's connected to them. Robin. Hi there. When will law enforcement wake up? You know what, Robin, I don't know. Because this is just ridiculous. 
they, they've got to be building a case. They've got to be because they've gone too quiet. But then again, they did go quiet on some, some of Wells' case. And look, they had evidence there of child, child neglect. And they've done nothing. You know what I mean? Not even charged them with anything with some of, some of Wells. So will this law enforcement, some county do something? Because they got DC, DS reports and child services reports and whatever, which is not good because otherwise Seth would say, yeah, everything was fine in there, there's no problem. You know what I mean? Well, I'm sorry, but you don't have a... Well, you can have child services come to your home and really it's just the child has lied. Or not lied, but um, em embellished. Embellished what you've said. Yes, that's the one I'm going to be showing tonight, Robin. Very, very informative. So, I don't know which one to show first. That one or the Seth one? Which one do you want to listen to first? The interview where Seth comes on or the neighbour? Because they're both good. They're both good. I've got them both. I've just got to open my channel up, my YouTube channel up. So, hang on. Download. I've now got into the point of if there's a video, rather than keep sharing it, right, I download it onto my YouTube channel. So I know where they all are, so I can just go and find them one click, well, a couple of clicks. So, uh, we've got the one where Seth blamed Katie. Right, we've got one where Seth explains the cease and desist, desist, and we've got the one with the neighbour. I think I pretty much watch everything. I'm, you know what? I don't watch everything no more. Right, because I know I do lives, and they can be two, three hours long. Yeah. And I'll just tell people, look, if you don't want to hear the babbling and you just want to watch the videos, just skip to the videos. Just skip to them. You know what I mean? Because that's what I do now. If they're talking about someone and someone's coming on a live, I'll skip right up until that person comes on. Then I listen to that person. And once that person finishes talking and gets off panel, I close the game. You know what I mean? Well, this is something I've not been able to get confirmed. As I was just saying, someone put a post up, right? And it like a very cryptic sort of post. And then someone must have commented and said, don't worry, Nina, it's only for the summer. But we all know what happened last time. But saying that, it did have it for Christmas, didn't it? It had it for Christmas. So, but it's got it again for summer. Which I think is a bit unfair. She can have it for a whole summer. She can have it just for a few weeks. Because, well, if the mother wants to go out away somewhere with the kids, you know what I mean? She didn't have her at Christmas. Not having her at summer holidays. It shouldn't be the whole summer holidays. Yeah, that's why I heard it. I heard it was on. But I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I couldn't remember. They said it. How can you get faith if he's got a missing... This is what I said. They've got a missing child in the house, so how on earth can the judge say, yes, your daughter, you have to... Your daughter has to go to the father's during the summer holidays. He's got a missing child, and it's not been confirmed where he was. Right? It's saying he was at work at quarter past five in the morning. Who goes to work an hour, wrong, wrong, 
six, seven. One hour, 45 minutes early. Because they don't start till seven in the day shift. Right? And someone, I did notice someone put a comment up the other day. I put a post up. I think it was today. And she brought up the same thing I, I've always said. If CP knew about Sebastian going missing at what? Ten past six, quarter past six, yep. Why? <laughs> a, he would have been at work because he was on the work, uh, he was on site at quarter past five. So he'd have been on site when he got that phone call. And B, why did he not come home straight away? Why was it he got kicked off site at 10 o'clock? And someone said, oh, I haven't heard about that. And I went, oh, yep, oh, I've heard. Bum, bum, bum. I'm typing away. My little hands couldn't go quick enough. My little skinny little fingers. I got skin. Well, I got chubby because I've got fluid on the one side. I mean, one arm. I get fluid retention. But so it's like my little fingers were tap, tap, tapping away. I've heard of that. And I can't understand how. He could be the, how he can get home. He could, he could have had that phone call at ten past six, like he said, or quarter past six, whatever. Within five minutes of making that phone, well, within five minutes, even while on the phone to the police, he could say, so up to the site manager, oh, I've got to go home. There's a problem at home, a situation at home. Uh, I'll fill you in later, but I've got to go. Sorry. It's an emergency. He could have been home by what? Quarter past. If, that, if he'd have had that five to say, no, say half six, half six to seven, seven to eight, he could have been home by 10. I am. But he didn't get home till about one, one thirty, which makes sense because if he got off, kicked off the side between 10 and 11, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1. Yeah. He left between 10 and 11 that morning. And I'll tell you another big uh, whopper. Can someone explain to me why he spent 17 hours? Once he come home, right? Now, I can understand him going back and getting his five-wheeler because apparently they said he pays monthly. Now, this was on the 26th. Right, so he went back, I think, on the 27th, 28th. It wasn't when Seth was there, put it that way. So it had to be after Wednesday because Seth was there every day, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. He didn't stay there. He came home on the night time but went there every day, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. He said he didn't go and get the trailer then, not while he was there. So it had to be. Thursday onwards. Right, so that would make it 26th, 27th, 28th. Yeah, so we had to get it by the end of the month. Otherwise, he'd got to pay again for another month. So people are saying, but why did he have to go back? He pays monthly. Yes, but he's coming to the end of the month. He'd have had to pay another month if he hadn't gone back and got his trailer. Anyway. It takes seven hours there and back. Three and a half hours there, three and a half hours. Well, be precise, Angie. It's three hours, 30... Was it 34 minutes? I can't remember. I can't be precise. My mind is... Listening to that guy sent my, my brain like... Sludge. Right? But it's, it takes seven, seven hours there and back. Right, well, okay, I can understand you get there, you want a break, you want to just rest out for an hour or so before you come home. Get a coffee, get a cool drink, whatever. Make sure everything's locked up and all the units, all the cupboards are locked and everything's put away securely. It does not take 10 hours to do that. Does not take 10 hours. He was gone 17 hours. 17 hours. Now think about that. 10 hours. Hmm. You think five hours one way, five hours somewhere, come back. 
said four uh, four and a half hours there, whatever. He had plenty of time if he had Sebastian in his car. If he took Sebastian in his car on the just my opinion. Hold on. Just my opinion. If he had took Sebastian on the Sunday night, right? Um, he ha he then took him back to the trailer before going to work at quarter past five. Hmm? He had plenty of time to do that. And their story is falling apart. Anyway, he had 10 hours once he got back down to that caravan site to secure everything up, to chill out for an hour or so, get a drink, something to eat, and then drive back. So he could have done safe, something like that. He could have done it in 10 hours, there and back, locked everything up, chilled out for an hour or so, and come home. But why did he stay those extra 10 hours? I think everywhere round within a five, four to five hour distance drive away from that site. Or even, as people are saying, on the way down there. You know what I mean? Did he have Sebastian in his trailer? While he went to work. Was Sebastian in his trailer while he went to work? Because what was the... Uh, I can understand him wanting to get back to get his trailer, but why spending extra 10 hours there? Why go drive down there, stop overnight, and then drive back the next day? That don't make sense to me. Not when you've got a stepson who's missing, and you've got a wife at home who's in panic mode, you know what I mean? I'd be distraught. I'd be going to my, no, you can't, no, you're not leaving here. Get someone else to go and get the trailer. You're not going, sorry. Get someone else, get your family to drive down and hook it up. I don't care, you're not leaving me on my own. You know what I mean? No way would I have let my husband go off for 17 hours. So... We've got that, but we're going to play, so which one do you want? Shall we play, so I think, Seth Blaine's KT. This is the JLR, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to play the neighbour. The neighbour, because that, this is really, really... Just stop you a minute, JL, JLR. Right? So, but this, the story is not making sense. The fact that we now know, apparently, she fell asleep at 10 o'clock. Well, she's some miracle woman because she fell asleep, read her coursework, spoke to Chris on the phone, heard a thud coming from Sebastian's room, Oh, and something else I found out today. I I misheard it. I must have misheard it when I first heard it. I kept saying on certain shows, who's the person who was walking around the house outside? There wasn't no person outside. What happened is about 11.30 at night, the lights all go out in the house. All the lights go out. And the neighbours got it on one of their... Cameras or whatever. All the lights went out at half eleven. And then shortly after that, there was a silhouette in their living, like the dining room window. Where their, their table is, there was a silhouette in their window. Is that someone looking out to see if anyone could see if there was anyone out there? Anyone could see anything? You know what I mean? Being as she went to bed at 12 o'clock, all the lights went out at half 11. 
and I also heard that the lights in Sebastian's room kept flickering on and off about 11-ish. So there's lots of little nip -bit, tip bits are coming out. Right? Right. There we go. No, we won't do it. We're not going to do it. We want. Oh, God. This one. Right. Like it. Just make sure you can see it. Yep, you're there. So this is the one with the neighbour. And this is a very interesting one. And I just feel so sorry now for this woman because she has publicly come out on video, on a live, so they can see her face and spoke out. But I think she's trying to get out the fact that the police were, doing, were busy that week. You know what I mean? She's trying to dispel some of the rumours. That's all she's trying to do is dispel some of the rumours that was going around. And she's opened up a whole load of new rumours. Alright, so we're going to watch this. Well, I'm the videos. coverage of the Sebastian Rogers case. I'm going to bring in Miss Bobby. Who is a neighbor of the prophets? I'm going to bring her right in right now. Uh, we're going to talk to a neighbor of Christopher and Katie Proudfoot. There she is. Going. Welcome to see you. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming on JLR Investigates. A lot of people are in the chat because they we no one ever really heard from a neighbor, Miss Bobby. Now you're make me want to <laughs> kind of kept my, we're all kind of hidden. You talk, you do share, you share a lot of insight. You've been there from day one, right? Yeah, well, I I don't know that I was in your group from day one. I was in another group um, from, well, not really even, honestly, day one was such a trauma, just dramatic day that I don't even I don't even think the only thing I was in on day one was our neighborhood group because that's where um Katie had first commented about him being gone um so no actually I wasn't in any Facebook groups day one it was so it was such a crazy moment so probably when you, yeah when you say uh Katie commented what do you mean by that she joined a, a neighborhood group well, so I'm an admin of our private neighborhood group, um, and she uh, created a post, I want to say around, I want to say 7.30 maybe-ish, 7.30 that morning, Monday morning, um, simply just saying, um, my son is missing, and kind of commented on a little bit about him like i think she ma made the comment about how tall he was um and that he was autistic and he was missing please check your cameras it was just like a two-liner just real quick sh shooting it out there so like maybe like That's an hour and a half hour something after she and chris uh that we found out that they called and reported sebastian missing Correct. It was, yes, because I think that from what I understood, she called around 6.30 that morning, I think. Wasn't 6 about 6.30, I think is. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah, it was. And I think from what another neighbor said that she actually caught her SUV leaving the neighborhood um, mm -hmm. right before that or right after that. Um, and so. It was she did all that and then came back. And then I guess that's when she put it on the, on the Facebook page. But I also remember what I thought was very odd was shortly before that, another neighbor. So if their house is here, if you're going up Stafford, a little bit farther up Stafford, 
um, was actually the first one to ask, hey, what's all the what's all going on in the neighborhood? Because my son, older son left to go to work that morning, approximately eight o'clock. And there was already police all up and down Stafford, like just covering it. Um, and they were already out walking around and stuff. And so I don't know if she, I guess she saw some of that traffic as she was leaving to go to work and she posted first on the Facebook page. And then Katie, after that is when she posted and I went back to find that and that previous neighbor deleted her post. What about Katie? I don't post? know. No, her, the original post, the first post. Yeah. The, it's no longer the neighbor, there. Is, is she? Yeah, it's gone. She, I, I, she had to have deleted it because you can't, if you're not the creator of the post, you can't delete someone else's post. They have to delete it. But when I went back a couple of weeks after everything happened and things kind of calmed down a little bit, um, I was talking to somebody else and I was like, you know, I remember um, didn't such and such uh, make the post first. And this is a neighbor down the street for me. And she said, yeah, I, I remember that. And I was like, I wonder what the time frame was different. And I went back to look and it was gone. So the or original neighbor that very first posted asking what was all the commotion going on. And I still wonder if that's why Katie posted that. But then Chris, it was like two or three neighbors after. So she, Katie posted her comment or her post. And then several people commented after. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. because She was asking like everybody check their cameras. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. And then Chris posted underneath that and simply said something like, yeah, my son's missing. That was it. Oh. So what does it, did it say like where the post was originating from or do you, do you, was Chris around the neighborhood by then? Okay. So my, I have twins and they, when we first heard about everything, they, jumped up and went running out of the house and went across the street down to where they live and they walked over because they wanted to be a part of helping you know look for him and um and they weren't over there and chris was not there yet so uh what seth was what? in the 8 30 8 30 okay 8 20 ish yeah because my oldest son had already left for work he left about eight then then my twins, when uh, uh, I got the phone call from the neighbor very nearby them, that is a good friend of mine, about. Well, that makes sense because Seth, they didn't get there till about eight eight fifteen. You know what I mean? So he probably just got there, really, when he was outside. When they were seeing, when he was seeing outside with Katie and Kathy and some law enforcement. So he probably just got there. So that makes sense. 8.15, 8.20 that morning, um, asking if I had heard what would happen. And I had not yet because I hadn't gotten going for the day yet. Um, and then when my son texted me, I didn't answer. So he called my kid, my other boy's phone and asked them, hey, you know, y'all see what's going on? And they came around in my room and said, Hey mom, did you hear what happened? I was like, wait, what, what's going on? My phone's ringing. You guys are running in here. Like what is happening here? And my neighbor was on the phone calling me. And so as soon as I heard the neighbor tell me the story, what happened, they went running out the door and went over there to kind of help, you know, with the search and stuff. And they said that they saw Seth and Katie in the front yard with, and of course they didn't know the names back then. They just knew like now that they've seen pictures, they go back and say, yeah, it was Seth and Katie and Kathy Bauer socks and a bunch of other police, you know, law enforcement and stuff like that. But Chris was not there yet. Interesting. Well, now, he wasn't there then. Now, where do you live relative to the Proudfoots? I live uh, at the very top of the hill on Kellen. So the next street, the street that turns into Stafford. The or, main you know, street. Main Street coming yeah. in. So just basically yeah. what you're now now going back to Katie, like what you know or what you heard. When was Katie driving around in her SUV? Like a time frame. Like when when do you think she was driving around well, in her SUV? So, looking for fashion, like she claims. Right. So I that's uh, there's so many different things here because 
Um, the neighbor that I actually spoke with, that I'm friends with, she's the one that has the camera on the corner of Stafford and Kellen. And I'm not going to mention her name, but um, she's the one that the camera footage got leaked without her knowledge and her permission that everybody has seen. But I've directly spoken with her. Now, that was wrong. Now, if that got rela released by Nick Barris, right? She could maybe do some charges. You know what I mean? Because she, he didn't get her permission. Because that video that he released was obviously either a friend of one of her children who took that off their security footage. Because you can tell it was done on the phone because of the shakiness of it. But I wouldn't be happy either if someone released that. Because I knew, I said straight away when I was seeing it, I thought, that, I know where that is. That is in the back of their houses. I said it wasn't. And I actually went round on Google Maps and I was trying to show you on Google Maps where it was. So, which wasn't happening, I wouldn't be either. And then I also have directly spoken with a couple of other neighbors that live very close to the prophet's house. And the neighbor that I spoke with the very first time that morning, she said that when she was taking her kids to school, Katie was already back from looking. She had just got back from looking and the kids have to be in school at 730. That's and so early. she normally leaves the house at seven to take her kids to school. But Katie was already back and in the front yard and all the clops and stuff were there. So she stopped for a minute to talk to her to her school. My neighbor that had the camera footage told me that her timeline is not working correctly. But when she put by a timeline, she means her camera on her security system, her house camera is not the timeline isn't working properly. Puts it all together with the sunrise and then the bus coming through and all of that. She said it was approximately about six o'clock, six fifteen, six twenty. It was right in between, supposedly when she discovered him missing. Supposedly she gets up, she runs around the house, she gets dressed, and she drives out of the neighborhood and that kind of thing and goes looking for him. I'm sorry, but is it getting dressed? That gets me. I, I don't care if I had Noddy like her or Teletubbies or whatever PJs on. I'd have just jumped in my car after going looking around outside and asking neighbours and whatever. I'd have jumped in my car. But there's something and she brings this up. She goes up to the school. Does she not? She says she goes up to the school to look. Does she not get out of this car and go in the school and ask? Plus, why would your son be making his way to school with no shoes on? Just saying. Um, but I know the neighbor, next, if you're looking at the prophet's house on the left... When she went running out of her house hysterical, um, the neighbor next to her was already out. You know, of course, everybody's getting up, getting ready for work, getting kids ready for school. Bus comes uh, six, seven, no, yeah, six forty-five, seven, seven, six fifty-ish. 645, 650. It's been a long time since my kids have ridden the bus, so I have to really think about that one. Um, but it's definitely before 7 because the kids have to be in school in class by 7.30. Um, and and we're the last pick up before he actually goes to school because we're right next to the school. Um, so, you know, everybody was getting up and getting ready for work and everything. So they actually she actually saw her out and she asked her what was going on. She told her. And so she actually walked around the house and was helping her look around the house. So she was already back from looking around seven. Interesting. When she left to go look for Sebastian, I know that if you turn right going out of the prop, which you go up the top of the hill, it's a cul-de-sac, or yeah. you go around and you can go up your street all the way at the back where the, the construction is. Did she, before she ventured out of the neighborhood, did she go up those roads, do you, do you know of, to look? 
Did she go up my road? Your road or, or her road itself to the top of the cul-de-sac. Uh, you know, where the, where the her only road thing ends. I was right. So the only thing I was told, of course, we we nobody in my house was up or out yet. So I can't verify that because we weren't out yet. But the neighbor that told me that she saw her her SUV drive across her driveway saw her leave. Like so leave out of that's w- right. That's yeah. interesting. So you would think that she, maybe you stay in the neighborhood a little bit and go up and down your own streets. She said, Look well, at that was when she that was out. when she went. Katie says in that interview in Chronicles of Olivia, where she does that hang motion across the neck. I drove, I jumped in my car, I drove around the neighbourhood, I went up to the school and he stopped and she did that hang motion. Then Chris told me the police were coming and to get back home. Okay? But you didn't drive around the neighbourhood, love. You've got witnesses. You've got a witness who saw you come out your road. And take a right. If you take a left, you take going up Kelling Road to the top where she lives. Right? But if you take a right, you're going down to the main road, Turnpike Road or something it's called. That, that was when she went to the school thinking mm-hmm. that he had walked to the school on his own, which I don't know why he's never done that before. So why would he, why would he do that? I mean, like, why would he just walk to school by himself? Plus, he had no shoes on, supposedly. So, like, why would he walk to school by himself? So, but that's what I was told, that he, she actually walked around her house outside, couldn't, didn't find him. So, she got in her car and drove to the school. And was back by seven. Around that time. Yeah, so was was night before that. To go up to the school. Yeah. Back. The Sebastian, did he take the bus to school or did he did did Katie take him in, in her from, car? From what Let the her, neighbor yeah, from what the neighbors I don't, of course I don't have kids that ride the bus anymore. Um, but from what the neighbor nearby said that he does he did ride the bus. Now the neighbor on the corner that has a surveillance camera said that there is a special bus that comes for certain kids that has special needs and whatever. And she said she said, I don't think he gets on that bus. I think he gets on the other bus. Um so that was what I was told. I can't verify that so I can't answer that appropriately. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we're talking all law enforcement all there starting to descend onto the area 8 a.m. ish, right? 8 a.m. ish. What well, they, you- were, they were there before that. That that's that they were already there and cars parked. By the time when my son went to work at eight, they were already there and already got clumped up together and starting to talk because they were already in the front yard talking to them. So they were. I don't know exact. I mean, I would say probably it was even before. I mean, they were probably there. I'm trying to remember what she said when she got ready to leave. She never said anything. The neighbor that called me and told me about it never mentioned law enforcement being there. She just said that Katie was outside walking around, you know, upset and everything. And she asked her, like, what's going on? Um, But she didn't specify if there were law enforcement there, but they were already there and out of their cars and in the front yard at eight o'clock. So they had to have been there before that. Gotcha. Any idea when Seth got there? No, but I do know that he was there by the time my kids went over there, like I said, which was about 830. He was already there. And I also know that his truck was, yeah, his truck was there like off and on the whole time. Gotcha. But I don't know so, what time exactly. So what happens to just explain everybody to everybody, then what did law enforcement do at that point, like throughout the morning? Once they all arrived there, did more and more law enforcement come, or was oh, there? Certain- I, ha- I I was I told my neighbor down the street. I said I didn't even know we had these agents agencies. I mean, like every, I've never in my life ever seen such a response. It was it it, it was all it was overwhelming. It was like it kind of freaked me out. Like oh my god, I feel like I'm living in a real life like drama crime scene. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. The very first 
um, that came out was the sheriff's department because see, we live in the county. So sheriff's department respond first because, you know, we're part of we're not part of the city. So they came out first and they literally walked all up and down and around and everything. Um, and then they came door to door. Um, and asked everybody, you know, who all had cameras and whatnot, what did you see? What do you know? Whatever. Um, and then it was now, of course, I'm having to really go back in my head. It's been a little while. Um, it was, it was later on that, that afternoon, they brought some dogs in and they, um, started walking around. They came around the houses and asked everybody to walk around their own property, look underneath stuff in anything that's unlocked. So, so all of us up and down my street, everybody, my neighbors came out with me. She and I walked together, walked all up and down our yards, all across the street, up and through the cul-de-sac, um, down the street a little bit. Um, there's a, a wire, a barbed wire fence behind us as of right now where the new construction is. So you can't get over that, but we could walk around it. And so we both walked up and around that, um, just looked everywhere that was kind of close by. Um, and then I noticed that they had the drones up. And of course, the news was short. That, that was Tuesday. The news came out and was flying the helicopter around. Um, it was chaotic. It was absolutely chaotic. Um, did, did you see um, Seth and uh, Katie out there looking? No. Not in our neighborhood. Mm -mm, never. Never seen and them was, walk, walk no, around. Seth was driving around no. and calling They out were in their yard, to out, out, but never left their property. No. Um, and I know for a fact, because um, so Monday, my kids were out with law enforcement because at that point it was we need every, all the neighbors come out, help us look everywhere, whatever. So they were open to everybody coming in and help. So at that point, my actually my kids jumped into one of those razor things um, and drove all up and through the property and stuff. And then my other one walked with the canine unit in the um construction zone he walked all the way through that they literally i had to call them at one point in time and tell them y'all need to come home and have lunch i mean this is crazy i know you want to help but you got to come home and eat and so then they came home they ate and then they went back out there and they were out there with them all day monday all day tuesday and then so tuesday we had swat that was the day we had the vigil and <laughs> um Little, it, it was interesting because we put out a post on the neighborhood group that we're having a vigil and everybody's invited. But we want it to be just the neighborhood only because we want it to be a private vigil just for our neighborhood and for the family. We were hoping if we made it more um, personal like that, that the, that the family would come and they wouldn't be overwhelmed with all this. That was the other thing. Good God, the traffic. The second that it got out, we had tons of people just driving up and down the street, just looking and watching. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you're going to do to help. We, we're flooded already with you know, police. I don't know what outsiders come in are going to do. I mean, it, it was it was chaotic as it was anyway. And now you got all these extra people coming out there. So it just got so chaotic. Um, but so Tuesday night, we planned the vigil. Um, went down there, got in a big circle, uh, introducing everybody and, um, the, there's neighbors, I don't want to get too personal here. There, there's, a, there are neighbors, actually we have, th I think two, maybe three sets of neighbors that are in law enforcement. They're in different counties. Um, one of them is actually a part of Hendersonville police and then the other two are from other counties. Um, that they came. To the vigil, and matter of fact, the one that is part of Hinchville has been in for since almost the beginning. Um, know them very well, good good people. Um, and he was down there with a the flashlight because we had so many people driving up and down and around and circling and circling and going up and down and circling and coming back and forth. And I'm just like, good grief! The Proudfoot sent. I don't know who it was, but they came down, and we were all introducing ourselves, and they introduced themselves as aunt and uncle the prophets? don't have a aunt and uncle prophets. apparently i don't know if it was chris's somebody's brother or that's what they introduced themselves as we are 
Maybe it was Sebastian's aunt and uncle. Chris and Katie said it was. Chris and Katie said they were their aunt and uncle. Well, it, it wasn't. Chris and Katie didn't come. They sent family members, and when they introduced themselves, they introduced themselves as we're aunts and uncles. Why so didn't Sebastian's Chris, aunt and uncle? Why didn't Chris? Did Seth go? No. So no Seth. That, no Seth. No profits. They basically sent their own representatives, family members that claim yes. their rank. That's correct. Yes. I got two questions back on the first day. When did when do you know that Chris arrived home? I did not because I didn't even I I didn't know I had never met them. They they moved in and nobody knew them. Like I still don't know anybody that really knows them. Like nobody ever really knew them. Um, when and so they, I, when did they move in? Do you know? I think well. So apparently it was a year and a half ago. Gotcha. Well, that didn't seem weird to me that no one knew him. You know what I mean? But because you say hello to your neighbors if you're going out your door coming in. But yeah, you know, I had several neighbors I, I spoke to. But I can't tell you about other neighbours in my road, other people that lived in my road or roads that adjoined my road. I couldn't tell you about that. I couldn't tell you about, well, I know my one neighbour across the uh, passageway from me. I don't know his name. I know him to talk to. I know my other neighbour who lives to the right of me. But again, I don't know his name. I don't. I just know him to talk to, to say hello to. I don't know what he does. I don't know if he's married, single, divorced, widowed, whatever. I don't know because I don't ask. That isn't my business. Hi. So moving into a house and neighbours in your road not knowing you, that's, to me, that, that doesn't ring bells for me. You know what I mean? Because people nowadays are very private. Anyway, they don't like everyone knowing your business. They really don't. When I grew up, everyone knew everyone. Everyone in my road knew us. Probably because there were seven children. There was two families in our road that with seven plus children. And that was my mum and dad, with her, her, their seven, and a family called Clark. And they had... I think eight were the two biggest families in that road. So obviously everyone's going to know us because we're a big family. But we knew everyone in our road. We knew everyone. Well, not everyone, but most of them. And those we didn't know personally, we'd say hello to if we saw them. Hi. And... If you got a clip around the ear by one of your neighbours for being doing something you wasn't supposed to do, and you went home and told your mum and dad, your mum would give you another clip. Well, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't have been doing what you did. You shouldn't have been lippy, or you shouldn't have been doing whatever. You know what I mean? There's another clout. So it's like the neighbours watched the children, and when my two, two were young, there's a, a woman who lived across. Not in my road, but the road to joining it. And one night she heard all the children out the front playing. And it used to really worry her because she lived on her own. She was an old lady, like. And she said, I looked out the window and I saw your two children with them. And she thought, oh, that's all right. They are no trouble. As soon as she seen my two children, she knew the other children were no trouble. Because she knew I wouldn't let my children hang around with other children. That was going to be causing trouble. Right. So, but otherwise, I didn't know half of my neighbours. I knew the ones that lived to the side of me, two directly across from me, one down the road because his their son went to school with my son and my daughter. Uh, I knew another family just round the corner from me because their son went to the same school as my son and daughter. You know what I mean? And that was it. I didn't know anyone else. Most of them only knew because 
of my son and daughter. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and they, they just say to themselves and nobody really even knew them. I didn't even know that the original owners sold their house and not because we don't, you know, our neighborhood is a, just a real quiet neighborhood. Everybody kind of stays to themselves except for, you know, if you need something or if a dog, you know, a pet gets out or if somebody goes on vacation, you know, hey, will you watch my house? That kind of thing. But we're, we don't really, unfortunately... I think everybody's just have busy lives and stuff, you know, and, and we just don't know. I mean, like each, each, each neighbor knows the neighbor next to them. Like I know all the neighbors around me and I know a lot of their original neighbors that were there from day one, but I don't know the ones that have moved in over the past five years. And I think with Some, COVID that kind of messed everything up too. Gotcha. Somebody put in the chat. What? Time does the trash get picked up in the morning? Oh, oh. Listen to this. Listen that to is this. the biggest misconception. Here we go with the whole light thing, right? Is this is where we're going? <laughs> so, sure. one, more thing, one more thing first. The the very first day, the dogs. You saw dogs out there. You saw. Oh yes, did you absolutely. See them going a specific direction or area? Did you see them centered around a certain area, or were they? Did they pick up any scent? Okay, so there was no scent that was picked up from their house to anywhere. That's However, good. and my, my kids were with the handler and the canine and actually watched. He followed them all through the construction zone. And one of my kids actually saw one of the dogs take the handler to one of the um, retention ponds. And not only did he go to the retention pond, he ran to it and jumped in it. And the handler had to go and get him and take him out of the water. And then dry them off. And my son looked over the handler and said, oh, my gosh, I've never seen anything like that before. He looked at me and said, he's never done that before. And my son said, why did he just jump in that? He said he was falling a scent. And so then the other. On that? Did they go in the water? Did they take scuba divers or anything in there? Supposedly, when I told Seth that, when I met him at the most recent vigil, he said they drained the pond twice. And nothing. But not only did I see that, but when on day three, I think it was Wednesday, when they when National Guard came through National and they had Guard. their dogs. Oh yeah. Oh National yeah. Guard. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They were all up and down through the neighborhood. That's why whenever I said, you know, the police aren't doing enough. I have some of my own personal thoughts about that, but I will tell you right now, we had local or that we had the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. We had Hendersonville police. We had um, uh, uh, state troopers. We had National Guard. We had drones. We had helicopters. We had state troopers. But I'll bring that up now. I was watching another YouTube channel earlier, as usual. And some of that was said on there about state troopers. Now, she'll go on to talk about uh, how they did. He asks if police, law enforcement have been back to the house since God. And she said, yes, and they did a reconstruction of the Sunday evening through to the morning. Right? Now, what they did, how they did that, I do not know. Right? Going on the knowledge of what Katie told them, they'd just be sitting there all night doing nothing. You know what I mean? So... And not only that, I think, and I've said this before, if Sebastian had took that trash can out to the curb on the Sunday, why did the dogs not pick up his scent from the garage down? His scent would have been picked up, barefoot, shoes on, whatever, his scent would have been there. But the dogs didn't pick up a scent. No scent from the day before, from the Friday, nothing. So, 
But what she says about how the dog anglers didn't, how the dogs didn't pick any scent up from the house, I'm going to show you a little clip. I couldn't find it myself. I know I've got it somewhere, but I, have, I couldn't find it. And so I'm using another person's channel to show you this clip. Right? And we'll see that. I'll show you that after this. We had canines. We had two sets of different canines and the National Guard brought theirs. So we we were flooded. I'm just going to speak up a bit. Um, okay, so, so back to the whole dog. Let's go to the trash because the trash is what everyone is like curious about. The time the trash picks up and then in reference to the lights. We're going to talk about the 3, 3 a.m., uh, 3, 10 a.m. lights. Let's talk about the trash. What do you okay. know? So our trash gets picked up by J.E. McMurtry Disposal, has for many, many, many years. Um, they were, they used to, a few years back, they would pick up around 6.30ish, but then the bus was coming through and it was making it hard for them to come through with the bus and all the kids were out and it was just chaotic. So they switched it and now they go down my street about 5.30, 5 ish between 5 15 ish 520 something like that every monday morning every monday morning that's going down my hill though that's not when they come in and they're going around it that's when they're coming back down so yeah i mean that's an extra what so i'd say if i was a garbage man i'd be coming up onto kelly lane i'd do that first cul de sac first then i'd come out of there then I'd go up the houses there, up to Stafford. No, there's another road before that, isn't there? There's another road that runs out the back. Right, I'd go along that road first, and then the cul-de-sac, and then Stafford Court, and then I'd make my way up Kelling Lane Road, all the way up to the top. So she says it's about 5.15, 5.30 when they're leaving, going down. From hers. So I'd say the rubbish was picked up around about 5, 5.15 from Stafford Court. Twenty minutes. How long does it take to, for the trash truck guy to go through the whole entire neighborhood? And the, the other misconception is a lot of people are saying that they have to hand dump the trash bin in there. They don't. It's a new truck. They have an arm and it does it for them. So mm -hmm. that was another thing where they're, they're having to pick up these big. No, they're not. They have an arm. They roll it over to the arm, connect it to the arm and they dump and it. You can hear it. I mean, it's not quiet. It's, it's loud. I mean, you hear the, the arm doing all that. So by the time they, but they, they collect the trash coming up the street though, not going down it. They're collecting it as they come up. So I guess they're probably in the neighborhood just like around five just before Got five it. yep and they're out of there before the buses come yes or the bus come or the you know Absolutely. you said buses uh where's trash go oh it gets dumped in um either nashville or gallatin if nashville is full they'll temporary temporarily dump it to um, gallatin and then once i guess nashville gets finished whatever then they'll transport to nashville the big misconception was that the neighborhood behind us they get picked up by a different company on tuesdays um so that's, that's a whole different thing is that that construction development you're talking that, about well that's that was the dumpster that everybody was asking about how is it possible that you know, whatever that the, the dog hit over there as well. The, the second dog that was out walking hit also by the trash dumpster and the trash dumpster owner found that out when, when law enforcement told him that we got a hit by the dumpster, the owner of the dumpster called them back and said, okay, we dumped our trash on this certain day, Tuesday, whatever on that certain day in Kentucky. So go, you guys need to go and get a, get a warrant, obviously. And he gave them permission to go search the Kentucky dumpster or landfill. So that's why they went to Kentucky. And then I was told that they also checked Gallatin and Nashville as well. Uh, that night, Katie claims the night of the 25th that Sebastian takes the trash out after they were arrived home from going out to dinner. Is, go ahead. There is there's no there's no specific footage of that. The neighbor that has the ring door camera that saw that. She said to me on the phone 
that the only thing you can see is a silhouette. She said there, you cannot see a physical person. There is absolutely no physical proof of Sebastian being at their house that night after dinner. There's nothing. See, no physical proof that he was there. So we're now back to did he come home that night? I think he did. I think he came home that night. And I think he wouldn't go to sleep. He was hyped up. You know what I mean? His medication wasn't kicking in. Now, did she give him any of her any more medication? This could be an overdose. Did she lose it on him? You know what I mean? Did something happen? Right? Or did something happen before the phone call? And that's what that three-hour phone call was all about. There's her car coming home. My neighbor did tell me that she had saw her car come, but she parks in the garage. So nobody saw him get out of the car. What time was that? I always want to know what time she arrived home. Do you I, know? I asked and she said that um, it was so dark that she couldn't really see. She saw the about um, six or so, I think is what she said ish because they went to dinner at Texas and then supposedly came home and then her car came in the driveway around six and then somebody pulled the Hi, trash bin out um you know after that uh but she did, they don't know who it was because you can't tell so no evidence yeah. any neighbor including yourself or any because you all talk the neighbors talk to so there's no definite proof id of sebastian coming home that night What made law enforcement change the way of thinking on the Wednesday? Something happened for them to start thinking and looking at this case differently on the Wednesday. Right? And I think they started the investigation then, but didn't say so. Right? I think they're still doing the search, which they was, but they started on the side, an investigation. Because something came up, something come to their attention on the Wednesday after he went missing. Because we know they changed their ways of thinking. We know that. Right? But what was it? Right? And now this neighbour, right? I will speed it up again. It's just that I slowed it down at one stage because I wanted you to hear about this, the bit, the lights. Okay, so we're going to listen to that. Everybody and said there's nothing to indicate that he was home um, that night. He got home. That night. There's no, there's no proof of that. Nobody has seen. Nobody ever saw him come home, or really. I mean, I don't even know if anybody can say they saw him leave with her i mean no i don't think anybody actually looked back that far it was so chaotic at the very beginning i think the police were so focused on a runaway team well he must have left with her earlier on because he was seeing at the texas roadhouse in that that was what everybody was focused on. So when they first asked to look at their video cameras i think everybody was checking actual of a, him walking out but there's no proof of him physically walking out. And then it was, okay, there, are there any cars around there? And so going back to the whole light thing, yeah. I was told that there was an unidentified car sitting on my street. Right. Question. Are there any strange neighbors in the neighborhood? Hold on. I'm going to put this up. Subaru Steve. Are there any strange neighbours in the neighbourhood? Antisocial, sticks to themselves. Another neighbour might know. Hmm. 
But you see, Subaru, Steve, I'm now, now my kids have grown up, right? I'm very antisocial, very antisocial. I don't go out. As I said, I know my neighbours in my passageway, in, on my floor where I live. I don't know their names. I know them to say hello to, have a good day, see you around. And that is it. Right? And I think over the years, more people have become more, they've got busier in their lives. Like you've got mother and father both going out to work. They're coming home, getting tea on. They haven't got time. Like when my mum had your kids, she would stand on the doorstep talking to the neighbours, you know what I mean? She had the time because she wasn't at work when we was little. She only started to go, she only went back to work when my youngest sister started school full time. Bear in mind, we didn't have nurseries then. You just went into primary one. No nursery, no reception. It was just primary one. So you was probably five when you went to school. Right? So, and that, that's when she started back at work. But she was always home to pick us up from school. Right? And then she'd come home with us and get dinner on. So she wasn't so social then. Right? And she did go out once a week to bingo, right, with some a friend she knew from work who lived down the road. And that was it. She didn't go out anywhere else. She didn't go out socialising. She didn't go to the pub. She didn't go anywhere. She liked to bingo. And that was it. So I think more people have got a bit more antisocial. Like, I don't socialise. I don't know anyone. And there could be a murder going on outside my flat door. And I'd look through my peepee hole or whatever. And I'd probably phone the police, but I wouldn't give them my number because I'm not going to have the police knock on my door and, say, oh, and let them know that I'm the one who phoned the police. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of people have become more antisocial. They, they've just got busy lives now and they've got, like, I don't hear off my, I don't see my son that often and he lives in the same town as me. But he's working and he works till nine o'clock most nights. The only nights he doesn't work till nine are a Saturday and a Sunday. And that's if he hasn't got a Saturday or Sunday off. If he's got a Sunday off, then he'll come over and I'll see him on a Sunday and we'll have dinner. But otherwise, I don't see my son for weeks. I really don't. Because I know he's busy, he's at work. My daughter lives an hour and a half away from me. Where I'm going this weekend. I'm going down there. So, but I don't see her. I don't, like, she's so busy with her life. She's got a job. She's got a young boy. She takes him to school. Or she goes to work. Her partner takes the little, little boy to school. She comes out of work, she comes home, sees to her dog, cleans the house up, goes and picks her son up, comes home, cooks dinner. And then it's the bedtime route. She doesn't have time to socialise either. And she, I understand that she sometimes she don't always phone me. Would be nice to hear off her a bit more though. But I understand. I could phone her more often. But then again, I forget because I know she's got a small window which she, where I can phone her. Hold on, that's my door. Right, I'm just going to put this video back on for you while I'm just going to sort my door out, okay? I'll answer your question, finish off in a minute when I come back. Facing the entrance, um, somewhere around 
three thirty or so, and then yeah. that and then the light, the flashlights yeah. were actually seen on the neighbor's camera. Two separate flashlights walking in between the yards, which the trash truck does not do. They don't need to. All of the trash is at the curb. They have never, ever gone. Matter of fact, when you sign up for services, they tell you in the email their rules and regulations. If your your trash is not by the curb, they don't take it. Unless, you know, you're an elderly person, you ask them if your trash is like in the front of your house and you ask them, they'll come and get it like that, but they won't come around the back or in between houses. That's bull monarchy that is not so, how that works no track you don't you don't believe that that three those three ten a.m lights were uh, around 3 10 after 3 a.m were trash truck lights not only do i not believe it but the neighbor that has the actual footage swore up and down that there are two different circumstances there was the car with the lights coming towards the car the car backed up on kellen and left and then about two ish hours, hour and a half, hour and 42 something. They're, they're like she said, the ta time stamp on the video is not working. It is stuck. She said, but you can tell because it's pitch black dark in the middle of the night when the car comes down the street, turns on to Stafford, sits there for about three to five minutes. The flashlights are coming from two different directions in between the yards. They do whatever they're doing around the car. The car backs up Kellen and leaves from Stafford. I'm sorry, backs up Kellen and leaves. And then two or so hours later, as the sun is just beginning to come up, you can see the trash truck. And she said, but the trash truck goes past her driveway. She said, you can see the trash truck and the lights and the back of the truck go past her driveway, go up the hill, do its business, turn around, come back down. And then within a few minutes later, the, the sun is coming up. And then you can see Katie's car leave, Katie's car coming back, and then you can see all the police come in. She said it's very obvious. So I asked her why the police are saying that that's trash truck, and she said, I don't know. I'm baffled because I'm, I tell you right now, there are two different circumstances, and that you can tell there are two different time frames. Wow, wow, because we've heard from Seth Rogers, and Seth is adamant that he was told. So – she was just talking, right, so anyway, about that neighbour, you no, know, I think they're all antisocial, all the neighbours are. Anyway, she was just talking about the lights, yeah? Did you hear her say, at one point, when you seen those lights, at the same time there was a car parked on the corner of Kelling Road and Stafford Court. And then after that, the neighbour... Worked it out that after that incident, the truck came up, the garbage truck. Then the buses went past. Right. And then they seen, um, no, then Katie went past, sorry, and then the school buses. So she caught it all. So why won't the police tell them? You know what I mean? It's sus, isn't it? Had a joint oh, like, like scarf, or he's seen, That's or because he's LE has told track. him that. What What's up with that? Because LE has told him that. Law enforcement has told him that. Why? Because, <laughs> that's the question I asked when I called. I got a kind of a. I think all of us are just super frustrated as this continues to go on that we don't understand what's happened. We don't know what's happened. You know, we've all been involved in trying to find him day one. We've spread it. We've shared it on social media. You know, a lot of us were out with law enforcement the first week or so, um, you know, looking for him and stuff. I mean, you know, this shook us up to the core. It flipped our neighborhood upside down and just shook us up. I mean, w nobody left their house for two weeks. Even the families who walk their dogs every single day, we didn't see them for two weeks. Why? So, what? Why? Yeah, I mean, we didn't know what was going on. We had no idea what happened. I mean, when you have a fifteen-year-old kid that just vanishes in thin air, nobody wants to leave. We're just we're scared. And then, of course, you see Chris, you know, have getting upset through all these YouTube videos. And if you know your neighbor is that upset and threatening people and saying the things he's saying. 
you're not going to go go be a part of that. You're going to stay in your little cocoon and stay away from them. And mm-hmm. I mean, lock your doors and be by yourself and protect mm-hmm. yourself and just stay away from it. Um, you never seen Sebastian Rogers in the neighborhood or walking around or anything at prior to that day. Nothing. From th- what I understand from neighbors that live right, right close to him, the only time they ever saw him come out was when he was playing with the dogs, the dogs would get out and, you know, he'd be out there for a little while, but nobody ever really knew him. Nobody knew any of them. He never ca- get, came out to play with the neighborhood kids. You never saw him out riding his bike. I mean, now I'll tell you this. I mean, we have neighbors that go out, like I said, and walk their dogs every single day, sometimes even twice a day. You have kids that will go out and play basketball. We have a basketball goal in one of the cul-de-sacs. Um, kids will come up and play basketball and basketball goal. They'll walk, you know, ride their bike. We have a um, uh, one kid that has a full wheeler and a dirt bike and he rides around that kind of thing. Didn't even know Sebastian existed. Never played with anybody. No friends, nothing. Never had any friends over their house. How long was well, I, I'm sorry, but that's say because he's autistic, he had trouble making friends, right? Making friends. Yeah, you know, my grandson, there's a young girl whose grandfather lives in, in the same block as me. And she goes to the same school as my grandson. She's a lot older, right? But she, she loves my, she loves my grandson. Whenever she sees him, she calls him over to go and play with him. If she's at the bus stop, she'll get on the bus with him and sit with him at the back of the bus and play along with his imagination going wild, right? And she'll do that with him. They didn't give Sebastian chance to be able to make friends because. Some children aren't as nasty as people make out to be. They're not. There's some children that think, you know what, it's not a bad lad. Leave him alone, you know what I mean? Let him join in. Let him join in. If he can't get the hoop, he can't get the hoop. But let him have a go. If he, if he can't ride the quad bike or whatever, then fine. But he can still hang, mess around with us. But he was never given the chance because i heard that seth was there for a few days staying with the proudfoots did you hear that i did well i saw his yeah well i didn't know he was staying in their house but i saw his truck there every single day for uh, it was see when i heard that he had stayed in their house for three days i was shocked i didn't realize he had actually stayed in the house because and then they said three days i'm like well that's odd because his truck was parked on the curb of the street for about a week but I didn't know he was actually there because he was out searching. Like he was actually at the command center for the first week every day, all day long. Was. Seth was. Not Chris and Katie. Chris and Katie? Oh, no. 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 He never left their house. Never. Not never. I'm aware of. But any flyers go to door to door, you know, to speak with neighbors, ask them if they've seen anything, nothing. No. Wow. Nope. That nope. is so good, Miss Bobby. So do you. And the only- go ahead. I was just going to say the only thing that they even put on Facebook was that one post. Which eventually got deleted. Theirs didn't. The original neighbor that was asking, hey, what's all the commotion on Stafford? She, that person, deleted their post. Gotcha. Chadies is still up there. Were the Bauer socks around at all during that week? Yeah, I know you said that they were there that morning. Did they look around? Did they look around? No, I, no we never saw anybody. None of them ever looked in our neighborhood where I'm at. I never seen any of them walking around at all, period, ever. Seth, Chris, Katie, Bower Sox, none of them ever. I never even met them. I had one encounter with, with Chris one night. Um, and after, I mean, I no, never saw him, never met him, nothing. The Chris encounter, you, you mind sharing? I, I think we talked about this offline a little bit. This is interesting. Yes. I'll, okay. So I'll kind of share a little bit of that. Um, my this was the gosh what day what day was it thursday i think it was i think it was thursday that thursday night um now mind you our neighborhood is on pins and needles 
um, don't know what happened to this kid, don't understand law enforcement's, you know, coming up and around. We've got every department that I didn't even know existed. Like I said, I didn't know, you know, we had a SWAT team. I didn't know we had, you know, drone footage. I didn't know we had any of this stuff. I mean, we're, you know, a small county. I didn't have no idea. Not a small county, but on me, like we're away from like the big crowd, you know, the, the city. Um, never had any issues. So I didn't even know that any of this stuff has existed. Um, so we're all kind of on pins and needles. And so anything weird, let me go back a little bit and say the night before this, this is the reason why this happened. The night before this, my, I had, I had went to work that night. I think I, knew, I did something. I wasn't home for some reason. My son was on our back deck. Now our back deck faces the construction, the top, gotcha. the back of the construction. And so he was on the back deck talking to somebody and he looks out and he says, well, that's really weird. And she said, what? And he said, look at the lights out there. And there was a flashlight. It was kind of a dim flashlight, but you could see it because it's pit plot dark. Um, and he said, why is there a flashlight over there? It was one single flashlight and it was like walking in the back, um, kind of over in the back of the woods area. And it like walked around, stopped, walked around a little bit, stopped, and then just disappeared in the back of the woods. And so he called me and he's like, what do I do? And I said, you need to call law enforcement, like call the number. We had a flyer had, you know, one of those flyers. And I was like, you need to call the TBI and tell them and figure out what to do with that. He did. And nothing, no yeah. phone call back. No, no, nothing. Nothing. Just, okay. Thanks for the letter. I'm like, okay, that's awfully weird. I mean, you would think that they would come check that out or call you back and ask you. Yeah. Follow-ups. Nothing. No, they didn't even call him back to ask him like, exactly where are you? You know, what did you see? Nothing. Nobody ever followed up or nothing. And so he was like, that's really weird. And I was like, yeah, that is weird. I mean, with the missing kid, you would think they would be coming flying up here to figure out who that was. So it was the following night. So now, of course, we're all like, you know, even more in pins. And he was like, is people just going to just start walking around our neighborhood in the middle of the night? Like they were pitch black dark in the night. And so uh, my, he was coming home. We were all at home and, and still looking around and talking to neighbors and figuring out like what the heck is going on. And he comes home and walks in the door and is like, mom, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, now what? And he said, there was, there's two people, a real tall, skinny guy and a real small, it looks like a girl maybe that is walking up our street. Now we do have families that will come out and walk their dogs at night before they go to bed, but they had no dog with them. No, nothing. And the strangest part about this was this guy was wearing dark, black, wide, like ski goggles. You've been in my neighborhood. It is, you can't see your hand in front of your face. It is so dark at night. It was Gary. nine o'clock at night vision goggles. Could they be night vision? And why would someone be walking up the road with really dark, uh, really dark goggles on on the night time? I can understand some people wear sunglasses because they're sensitive to the light, to lights. I understand that, but this is pitch black where they live. They've got no street lights. You've only got lights from the house, pardon me, from houses, and they don't give off that much light. So why would you be wearing really dark goggles at 9pm at night? night why is somebody walking with these big black goggles how can they even see well with everything going on i'm thinking okay that's very suspicious i gotta check on that yes i could have called law enforcement and that's what was said you should have called law enforcement however i didn't want to call law enforcement on my own neighbor if it was a neighbor out walking around i didn't want to be rude and call law enforcement on my neighbor so I told my son, I said, you know what, let's go. He's got a Jeep that's got a bunch of lights on it. And I said, let's drive down there and, and, and turn your lights on and see if you can see somebody out there walking. I said, I'll call law enforcement and let them know what we're seeing. And then we'll just turn around and go back home. I wasn't going to follow them. I just wanted to see if I could find them. So we're driving down my road. We turn up Stafford because we didn't couldn't find them. Like, well, maybe they went up Stafford. We went up Stafford. Now my son's Jeep is loud. Um, and so I, but I didn't even think about it. I was more focused on who this person was. So um, he drives up Stafford and he says to me, Hey, while we're up here, where's Sebastian's house? And I'm like, Oh, uh, we just passed it. So he turns around 
and goes back down. And we're going slowly because I was trying to point out Sebastian's house. And so I pointed it out. He's like, oh, okay. And so we drive back around and we're driving back down to the other side of the neighborhood or another cul-de-sac. And he said, wait a minute. Didn't you say that this other neighbor has a ring camera? And I said, yes. And she's the one that saw the silhouette in the window and the lights in the house go on and off and whatever. She's like, but that doesn't make any sense because if that house is, is located here, how can she have seen over here? And I'm like, okay, back, go back up the street and I'll show you. So we went back up the street to show him where that house was versus this and all the whole thing. And as we were coming back up, we kind of stopped. Now this is my neighborhood. I'm not a suspicious person. This is my neighborhood. I should be able to do whatever I want to. Right. So I stop or he stops a little bit. I'm pointing that house out and we drive out and I said, Sean, I said, honey, we got to go home. And he's like, why? And I said, because somebody is standing at their front door. He was like, oh crap. And so, and I did not, God yeah. honest truth. I never meant to upset anybody. It was yeah. truly just me yeah. trying to figure out what's going on. I never meant to upset anybody. Turn around Stafford. I'm coming back down. And yeah. Chris is st- now, mind you, I've never met this man, never yeah. seen him before. I wouldn't even know who he is. Matter of fact, I thought he was law enforcement he stands in the middle of the street and puts his hand out and stops just like this. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. And I'm thinking I'm thinking it's law enforcement. I'm like, oh, crap. We're about to get in trouble because they're going to think that we're looking for this kid or something. So right on the window and he comes around and he stands there just like this. Just like, what are you doing out here? And I'm like, holy crap. I said, I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're just we were looking for. And I told him what happened and told him the whole story. And he was like, why wouldn't you just call law enforcement? I said, because I don't want to call law enforcement on a neighbor. If they're out walking around, that's kind of rude. And he's like, well, you have no business driving around here and started telling me in a very intimidating, very strong voice, I guess you would say, big tough, you know, he's a big guy, you know, kind of thing. You know that that my son is missing and, and they've got police all around here looking. I said, yeah, I know, kidding. I know I'm aware. I've been talking to him. Trust me. I know. I get it. And then he said, there's a, there's a uh, police. What do you, um, the the heat sensor mobile unit things, you know what I'm talking about, that that can de- heat sensor and stuff. I had one of those up in the top, hoping that if he came home, it would alert law enforcement that there was somebody walking around, which I don't get that because you've got families that are walking dogs anyway. So I, anyway, so I was like, I'm so. Oh, so that thing at the top of their road was a camera, but also a heat-seeking camera. So if you come back in the dark, they pick up a heat source. Oh, but why did they take it down? So sorry, I'm so sorry. I kept apologizing to him. He got really upset and, you know, mm-hmm. kind of said some things. And I was trying to calm him down. I'm, I'm, I apologize. And my son's girlfriend was in the back. And he, she thought that if she rolled the window down and said, I am such and such and I go to your son's school that he would calm down even though I said hey I'm your neighbor I live up there everything's fine I'm sorry I didn't mean to bother you I thought even me telling him I was his neighbor would calm him down it's like he just glossed right over that he didn't care so she says I'm such and such and I go to school with your son and he stops mid-sentence to me and said oh and got like stopped looked at her and said your name and he she said yes sir like how do you know she only gave him her first name and he said the whole thing and she was like how do you know my name and I was like what the crap I looked at my son I said we need to go you just we just need to go we just need to go and I'm like I'm gonna call the police because this is getting I don't know I don't understand I just I wish you could have I can't describe his body how did he know that girl's full name. She didn't even live in that neighborhood. Right? She probably lived some in some of the county, but somewhere else. Right? So how did he know her name? She only told him her first name, but he knew her. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> 
but he knew her first name. Now that would freak me out. If I've never met a guy before, and he turned around and said, Oh, yours, and I only gave him my first name. Right, and he turned around and said, Oh, yours, such and such. I would go, Oh, hold on. How do you know my name? I want him to tell me how he knew my name. Right? Because that is not right. How did he know her name? Body language was just very It strong. wasn't like well, for that people were out there looking for his son or thinking he was more like I, I'm trying to stop. Get off my street. Get off my street. Get out of here. Get off my street. Go home. Leave me alone. Get away from us. But he told her that... So you're the girl that runs this Facebook group and this, that, the other. I'm going to demand you take that off. You get your phone. And he said, where are your parents? And she said, at my house. And he said, well, I'm going to find out where you live and I'm going to come knock on their door and we're going to have a conversation. And he, she said, OK, good luck with that. And I was like, you know what? Look, we don't want to you know, cause any issues and whatever. I try to give him grace. Don't know the man from nowhere. And I just kept saying, you know, he's upset. His son's missing. He's really upset. He's very defensive. Maybe that's just all that what it was. Now that I've seen some of his YouTube videos and I'm like, yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know the back end of those details. I know we we talked before offline a little bit. And you said, you know, a kind of like a confrontation kind of deal. We confronted you guys, but I didn't know those. Well, uh, like back end details okay. that you shared. Um, somebody in the chat, Smiley's World, was asking prior to the February twenty sixth, right when Chris arrived home. Uh, was he? Did any neighbors or anyone that you heard, whether you see it, but you said you never knew him prior. Did anyone ever say anything about him being around the house on the twenty fifth, the twenty fourth, or seen in the neighborhood or anywhere in the area prior to? The no, day? nobody's ever really mentioned him. The only person that's ever said anything about him coming home, like I said. Nobody really ever paid attention, I don't think, because even the neighbor that lives close by that I'm friends with, I asked her, like, you know, did you ever see? She said, I never really paid attention because, like, he would come and go and they never were out, really. You know, and they, they had this this camper and the camper would leave and then it would come back. And then, you know, he never came outside. And, and it's odd because Seth kept, I mean, Chris kept saying that he would go outside and play and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And she's like, I don't remember ever seeing him really outside playing. Like, there's no playground. They don't have a playground outside. They don't have a trampoline outside. Like, if you looked at their yard, you wouldn't even know there's no bike. There's no, like, scooters. There's no basketball. Balls. There is, n you wouldn't even know they have kids. There's nothing in their yard to play with. He never outside, like, he didn't go outside and play catch with his dad. Nothing. Interesting. Now, as you said, pitch black in the neighborhood. Do you buy it where they're claiming that this kid walked out the front door and kind of no. did bad neighborhood? No. You, no, because every, no, because everybody around the camera. Would a kid go out at night and walk around out there at night alone? I don't think so. I mean, in, unless their parents didn't. Now, we did have a ding dong ditch happen a couple of years ago. Um, but no, I mean, I've never I've never experienced kids just randomly walking around the neighborhood. That's the thing about our neighborhood is it's so quiet. Like at night, literally, like, you know, in the summertime when my kids were younger. Sorry, my car shut off for me for something. Um, when my kids were younger. They would go outside and play like flashlight tag and stuff like that. And I'd have to get on to him like, okay, 10 o'clock, y'all need to be done because everybody's got to go to bed and whatever. Nobody ever gets like, you don't ever just see random kids walking around by themselves. I don't buy that at all. And I know that that neighbors that are right around them said that there was nothing on their cameras. Nothing. So no evidence whatsoever for that morning. No. 26, and not even the 25th, the night of the 25th. Wow. Do you think law enforcement? He just vanished. He literally just vanished. What's your theory? What do you think? What do you think happened? What's your theory? Based off you being a neighbor, based off you speaking to other neighbors, you're very close to the area. You've seen law enforcement over there. What do you think happened? I have to be very careful with that one. Hmm. Um, I know there were some family dis dis issues. Like there were some personal stuff going on within the family between Katie and Chris. Um, I, I, I would, Seth told us, you know, that he was supposed to get full custody. One minute he says that Katie was okay with it. The next minute I'm hearing that Katie was not okay with it. Um, I, I don't know their personal story. I know that neighbors uh, um, are close by them heard fighting within their family outside, verbal 
things that were said um, outside. So I don't know that it was, you know, I, I think they, they were, there were some struggles within the, the family. I mean, everybody's got their, every family has issues. I get that, but I don't know families typically would get into that kind of a dispute outside. I mean, if, if I was going to have a conflict of interest between my kids and I, or my husband and I, we would be inside. I would be outside making that known. And apparently there were some situations where things were heard that weren't good. Bobby, when did, when did, when did those fights occur? Do you know? Uh, when we, over the past, I mean, you know, I guess since they've, they've been there like, periodically, it, it wasn't like a one-time thing. It was, there were other you know times where things were said and, and that kind of thing. I, I don't live close enough to them to have heard that. I mean, they would have to have screamed at each other for me to have heard that. I, I didn't hear it, but I know that neighbors around them um, have reported hearing things that were said outside and it wasn't like a one-time thing. Any cops ever get called? Or well, I mean, CPS was, was, you know, called multiple times. And I, I know teachers personally uh, that still work at beach um, that were told things and they had, had to report it. I mean, when a teacher is told, counselors and teachers are told things, they by law have, can be um, over-exaggerating. I, I, I know that, especially teenagers, that kind of thing. Um, I think for me, you know, it, it, I think my kids would be um, respectful enough with us that if something happened, I don't think they would go and say like, you know, my mom is mean to me. Like they know I would, that's not true. And they would get in trouble for lying. So for him, for him to make up that things that he was saying, I just, I can't, I, I can't imagine him making certain things that were set up um, enough, enough for CPS to be called on them. And I know they were called multiple times, multiple times. So how, when you say multiple, how many times? I have no idea. I have no has idea. Any, I, I've, has any I'm not neighbor, privy to that information. Has any neighbors or anybody tell you that they've seen the CPS at their house? Like, I, I don't know. They have not actually used the words. I've seen them at my, the house, but they've told me that there have been a, people that have visited an official. Like, I don't know. Like the car that comes is not going to have CPS written on it. Yeah. I mean, it may have a government official like license plate or something like that. Um, and they're not going to have like a, they're going to have a badge on them as they go to the front door. But it's not going to be something that a neighbor is going to see um, that kind of thing. Um, so I don't know. Like I, neighbors hasn't, haven't said like I have seen this happen because they were really paying attention. Um, I, I don't think it was one of those things where I don't think neighbors like it, after this has happened. Some of the neighbors are going back and saying, wait a minute. I remember this and I do remember that and I do remember this and oh wow this is like all connected but when it happens over a year period of time and it's just random but then nothing really ever comes of it you just kind of try to stay in your own lane and mind your own business because you're not hearing like I don't know that neighbors heard screaming or like I don't know that it was like the, the things that were being said outside were loud enough to make neighbors call I don't think it was that kind of like if a neighbor next to me, I heard a kid screaming, help me, don't, you know, whatever, I would be calling the police. Like, okay, I don't, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to call the police and be anonymous. It, it wasn't that kind of a thing. It was it was things that were said and arguments between them that made neighbors think, gosh, you know. But when, when you say that, are we talking Chris and Katie or is Seth in the picture too? Is it like, were there arguments with Seth there? I don't think Seth was ever there long enough. I think he was there long enough to pick um, – Sebastian up for his weekend or they would meet somewhere for his weekend or something like that. I don't think that Seth was ever there. I think it was mostly Seth did say he never went in the house. You know what I mean? He'd just wait for Sebastian to come out of school, come home from school and then pick Sebastian up and go. So he was never really in the house. If he was, it wasn't taking notice of it, the security cameras or anything in the house. He wasn't there long enough. He was only there long enough for Sebastian to come home from school, pick his bag up, his overnight bag, his weekend bag, and take it to his, take him to his. So, right, come on, we still got a while. The one neighbor told me that she heard, um, and I'm not going to go into a lot of whole big detail because I don't want to get into their whole personal life. I don't, it's not my place. Um, but a neighbor had told me that, um, there were, there were things that were said between like Chris and Katie would get into an argument, um, like in the driveway. And then Sebastian might come outside and Chris would raise his voice at him, you know, either get inside or what are you doing out here or make comments to him like that. Um, and like I said, it wasn't like 
I'm going to kill you or I'm going to beat your butt. You know, it wasn't like such a horrible thing to make a neighbor call 911. It was just a very like uh, abrasive, mm-hmm. abrasive enough to now that he's missing, they go back and think, oh, huh, so that's kind of like that was the kind of what you were saying when the neighbors kind of put these things, pieces together after the fact. Yeah. Right. It's one of those things that you go back and look and think, oh, OK, so maybe there was something to that. I just didn't realize it. Have you ever heard anything about the mattress in the garage? I have, and I have not been able to confirm that. Um, I did hear that and the neighbor t- next to them, uh, when the garage door would come up for her to leave, they would they saw a mattress in the garage. And well, I mean, Chris admitted that there was a mattress in there. Now he said it was for his daughter, so maybe. But why is it still in there? I don't know. No idea. Yeah, they said on Nancy Grace that they got a, a new bed set uh, after something missing. But then people are also. That, that, that it's punishment. Did you? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about too. The punishment aspect about Sebastian sleeping in the garage uh, for punishment. Yeah, have you heard that? I did hear that, but I, I can't confirm it because I have not talked to the neighbors that live next to them that were the ones that said that. I don't know for a fact they said that. But my thing is, and again, I'm not trying to put anything blame on them at all because I don't know them. Don't know anything about their personal story. Have no idea. I can't confirm any of this. But I just know that that I'm surprised that the mattress has been in the garage that long. I mean, if if the mattress is for your child. Wouldn't it have been put away or put in the, I mean, why is it still in the garage and not in the child's bedroom? And two, um, the daughter of Faith, I, I don't ever remember her being there. Like if she was there, I mean, maybe once, one summer, I mean, I'm just surprised that she would have a brand new mattress if she's not there very much. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she didn't have a mattress and that's the first one. You see, why would she know if Faith had been there or not? Because she lives on Kelling Road. And her house backs up onto the construction site, right? <coughs> so, how would she know if Faith was at the house or not? Because we know he was, she was there at Christmas. Because it was at, in the new year, when she went home, in the new year, Nina, the mother, went and got this, put a motion, some corp thingy, right? And when she spoke to Chris, he turned round. Uh, when, oh, when Chris phoned her or something to tell him about Sebastian going missing, going, right? She said, well, we've got a court case. And he said, we won't be there. Now, how would he know he wouldn't be there? You know what I mean? If anything, I, if that had been me, I'd go, well, we'll have to see because we don't know what's happening yet. We don't know where Sebastian is. If he gets back, comes back, then we'll be there. If not, I won't be there. I'll have to let you know. But he didn't. He just said, we won't be there. He won't be at the court hearing. Because Sebastian was missing. But Sebastian could have come back five minutes later or an hour later or a day later. (laughs) You know what I mean? We could have found him. Chris was argument he wasn't going to be at that court case. But he was. I think he did, um, it's like Skype, is it? Where they go on video Skype. So. You spoke earlier about a silhouette and a light inside. Oh, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Some people were asking that in the chat. What's that all about? Okay, so um, if I go back to day one and kind of rehash a little bit, trying to make this as, as short as possible. Um, the the neighbor close by that saw Katie out front on the way to taking her kids to school. She was the one that called me friends. I'm you know good friends with her. She's the one that actually called me and told me what was going on um, and yeah. said that uh, I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, I went and asked Katie what happened. And she said, and this is where the story gets totally misconstrued. I don't know. Um, again, third party, I'm hearing this from another third party source. So, you know, I've got to trust this lady. She's a good friend of mine. I don't, there's no reason why she would lie. Um, but she said, when Katie, um, ha- they had got home from Texas Roadhouse to the trash out, so on and so forth. Um, he, Sebastian was in his room. She was in the kitchen, I guess, getting, you know, whatever done. Um, and, and from her house, she's close enough to where she can see from the ring camera, like the lights inside. It's dark. So, I mean, if, it, if you have lights on, you can see it. Um, and so she said that she could see the lights in the house around 10 or so. Um, then Katie told her that Sebastian was in her room. She was in the kitchen. She said, you need to go to bed. And he said, okay. And she goes in the living room and does whatever. 
ever watched a TV. She says she was studying. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Doesn't matter. She was in the living room for whatever reason. And suppose. No, no, no. Let's get this straight. She was sleeping, studying, and talking on the phone. I know I can. Uh, I know women are supposed to be good at. Uh, what is he? Um, doing several jobs at once. I'm not that flipping good. She told my neighbor that she fell asleep and. Say that again. You broke up. Say it again. You broke uh, up. She. This punk. And she yelled across the house and said, Sebastian. And he said, Yes, mom. And he, she said, Are you okay? He said, Yes, I'm fine. I'm good. Go to bed. And she said, Okay. So she gets up. And my neighbor said, You can actually see his light go off, her walking across the house, her light go off, and then a silhouette come up to the window for a minute. And then everything just goes black. What time was that again? Because you cut out. I'm sorry. I know my son was calling me. Um, okay. So she she woke up around 1130 is what she told my neighbor that she woke up about 1130. And apparently he was still up. But I, I find it odd because my thought is, and again, none of my business. I just think, okay, put yourself in that position. If I have a child who's got special needs and I hear a thump, I'm going to walk into my child. No, let, let me let me put it this way. My kids are all very healthy and normal. I'm very blessed to have very healthy kids. But if, if it's 11 o'clock or 1130 at night and my kid has to be up at six the next morning, I'm going to be in their room yelling at them and taking their electronics away and telling them, go to bed now. That, that I would be walking in my, my kid's room. Even where my kids are now, healthy and, and average children, whatever, no problems. If I heard a thunk, I'm probably still going to go in their room and ask, like, what in the world was that? I wouldn't just stay. But, but, you know, hey, maybe she trusted me. Maybe she thought it was no big deal. I don't know. Whatever. But she that's what she told my neighbor. And then she goes to bed. 1130, though. See, that's that information is not really out there. We keep hearing 10, 8, 10 p.m. kind of deal. Put him to bed here or hear the thump. Are you OK? Good night. 10 p.m. Right. But this is what she told a neighbor. That's right. That's right. And when I asked my neighbor, I called. So she told me this Monday. And then when the sheriff's office came by our house to do the same door knocking thing and walking around and whatever, I asked the sheriff, I said, let me ask you a question. And he's like, what's that? And I said, I know early on investigation, they actually were talking to us like day one and two. They were talking to us. So they were giving us information. They were telling us kind of what they were going to do and whatever. And then after about a week of it, they just shut down and never would talk again. The day that the TBI came in, that was it. No more discussion. It shut down. We're not talking about it. You're just going to have to be in the dark. So, but the day two, uh, when the sheriff's office came in, no, I'm sorry, the state troopers came in. Still don't know why state troopers got there. Haven't figured that one out yet. I don't know why state troopers would be there. But state troopers were came, came in, the, actually, they came into, into my driveway because they were rinsing and their shoes off they had gone into the construction area and his boots were all muddy and so he and my son were renting his shoes off and i looked at him and i said let me ask you a question i said he's like what's that i said um if you were if you'd fallen asleep in a living room and your kid walks out the front door wouldn't you have heard that and he was like not only would i have heard that but i would have jumped up with my gun in my hand to figure out who's coming in my house yeah because that's the thing is like she falls asleep on the couch and her kid just walks out the door but then when i asked my neighbor about that again called her the next day i'm like okay explain this to me this is what you said. This is, I don't understand that. And she said, oh, well, she woke up and then heard the thump and that kind of thing. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it goes with all that in the evening time at the same time, like you said, no evidence that any neighbors or anyone seen that they, he actually returned home that day. And then we also have that light, those lights. It's just a mystery in a sense, because those mysteries, someone asked it. go ahead. I'm just going to say those were not trash trucks. Thank you. I concur. But why did authorities say it doesn't have any ev evidentiary value? I asked that when I called the lead detective and I thought I told him that I know the neighbor. I've seen the video footage from the very beginning before it was edited. She told me with her own mouth, looking at it herself, there are two separate occasions, car, then truck. Why is that? We've had it. He told, he argued with me and told me that he had it broken down. The Secret Service looked at it and they confirmed that, in fact, it was a trash truck. And I said, I'm telling you, it was not. He said, well, I'm not going to say I argue with you. I was like, OK. Wow. Somebody said in the chat, um, any video footage of Katie searching for Sebastian that morning? Like, do they have any, since you have a neighbor that has a ring camera, did any cameras pick up Katie actually out there searching that morning before? If, um, she, if she, oh, you mean before all the police got there? Yeah. For, yeah. So the neighbor that was leaving to go take her, her well, actually the, the neighbor's camera did pick up her walking around her house. Really? So she walked around her house. 
Yeah, because in the neighbor, if you're looking to her house, the neighbor to the left of them, that the wife got came out and was actually looking. Uh, oh, there's like a little um, like a wood door underneath the house. What do you call that underneath the house? The crawl space. Um, they actually opened up that door and were looking in the crawl space together. And so they they were looking. But as far as outside of the neighborhood, I've never seen them, and they've never no not that not that I'm. Aware. Oh, so Katie and her neighbor looked in the crawl space. SG, I kind of lost interest in the interview when I heard uh, he say bias opinion. Plus, after 100 days, it can be difficult to recall accurately. And she's reading stuff on Facebook group, in my opinion. Yeah. But she's also talking to, she's been talking to neighbours. Right. And... Neighbours who have had the video evidence, like, there's a lot more to this, you know what I mean, this interview, and it's like, she goes on about the videos, every video they've had, they've handed into law enforcement, and yet law enforcement are being very cagey about it all, but I have said those lights, they weren't, they weren't garbage trucks. I, I said that. But, and I knew it wasn't a, a, a ruckus, like that one video was trying to make out. I knew it wasn't that. But because of the angle, I, it doesn't show you the full screen. Because that woman says on her security camera, you can see a car parked on the corner of Kelling, Dro Kelling Road and Stafford Road. Right? So she's got a camera that picks up that corner as well. As well as across. So it's quite... But when you look at that camera on that house, it's, I don't see how it can pick up. Unless that other camera, there's another camera on that house. Unless that's the one that's picking up the car sitting on the corner. You know what I mean? Because there is two definite, uh, I know there's one camera, but there's, I thought there was another one there. Because the, way, the angle that the camera was pointing, you wouldn't get the corner of that roading. You really wouldn't. Right, but I don't know. I don't know how the cameras work. So, but she said the neighbour said there was t two instances: one, the lights and a car, then the garbage car garbage truck, and then after that, Katie driving past, and then the school bus going wherever up the road or whatever. So. Unless it's one of these cameras that is like a circular one that goes can pick up a big area. You know what I mean? But it doesn't look like that sort of camera. So, um, I don't know. But, it's interesting what she's saying. I'm not taking too much into it. I, I'm interested with the light situation. You know, why would that neighbour lie about what was on her home security camera? I can't figure law enforcement... Hold on, I'll put it up on here. I can't figure law enforcement was being cagey about video before this because it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. Or if not two flashlights, it was at least one flashlight. Like, one light could have been... From the house across the road. You know what I mean? But unless we see the whole video, the whole screen, because I don't think we're getting the whole screen either. Because if she says there's a car parked on the corner of Kelling Drive and Stafford Court, we're only seeing across from their house across to the neighbour's house on the, on the bend and a uh, community, community area. 
right? We're only seeing that. We're not seeing anything to the corner of the road. So they're not showing all of that either. But there's a lot more about videos coming up. Aware of. I mean, and I asked my kids, and my kids said they had never seen her, never seen him. Um, they did see Seth was out there a couple of times with everybody. He was at the command post. I have a good friend um, that was there in the command post, and she confirmed that he was at the command post. But I asked her, I said, did you see uh, Katie or Chris or the Bowers talks? And she said, no, never saw any of them. But then again, she said, but I mean, law enforcement did ask them to stay home in case he came home or called. So there's that. Yeah, but one do of you them think law mad. enforcement exhausted the whole area? Like, do you think they did a, a thorough search of the entire neighborhood and the streets along Long Hollow Pike and in the school? Do you think they? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like definitely. I mean, I watched it with my own eyes. They they were deep and they were climbing in the trenches and looking in the sewage areas. And then they had dogs everywhere. They had drones everywhere. They had, the question is, what are they doing with whatever evidence they collected? And what are they doing with the surveillance cameras? Because what I'm told that neighbors saw, they're de declining, denying. They're denying. Yes. Wow. Why is that? Exactly. See, so neighbors. I'm telling her what they've seen on their cameras. But when they ask law enforcement about it, they deny it. Is it a cover-up? Does Chris have, or his family have such power with the law enforcement there? I don't know. But we're not talking law enforcement here either. We're talking TBI. Right, and as soon as they start stepped in, that's when everything started changing. TBI come into it, I think, on the second day, because that's when it went to the Amber Alert. And by Wednesday, law enforcement were looking at this case slightly different. Something happened, or they got some information on the Wednesday. Right, they kept the search going, right, so it wouldn't throw, oh, why have they stopped the search so suddenly? It's only been three days, why have they stopped the search? So they kept the search going for the week. Yeah, and then they said, we're scaling back the search when we're looking at the investigation side of it. Now, something I posted today. As I said, I'm very behind on a lot of this stuff with Sebastian Rogers. I really am. Because I've been looking at other cases. And I posted some from Nick Barrett's page. And it was something about the DA. And I thought, hold on, hold on. I know Chris said to Seth in that live with web sleuths, you was in that room with the DA and law enforcement and this and that, yeah? And we all thought, why is the DA there? Right? And then Nick Barris mentioned he spoke to the district attorney. And the district attorney said what he said. And I'm thinking, hold on, I know I'm from the UK. I don't know how it works in the US. But have you ever known a district attorney be involved in a missing child's case. Yeah, yeah, like the, I thought, oh, they're walking with the dog angler. She so cannot have been staying back away from him. You know what I mean? They shouldn't have been walking with the dog angler. Surely they should have been. Sorry, mate, you can't walk with us. Walk behind us. A distance behind, but you can't walk with us. You know what I mean? But why was there with the dog angler? They shouldn't have been with him in the first place, to be honest with you. They should have been, well, you want to help? Let's get you searching elsewhere then. You know what I mean? So that is an odd thing. Right. Let's continue. I don't know. That was what I asked. I have no idea. See, I what I, see, what I find interesting, Miss Bobby, is, you know, I, 
I was up there what a week and a half later, and then uh, we were searching, and uh, we were searching in, on that federal property, and there was a dog hit, mm-hmm. and uh, law enforcement didn't even go out there to look at all, as as if they didn't even care. Law enforcement won't go somewhere if they know something else. The reason law enforcement never went out to that sighting, that hit, was because they know something else. Right? They know that wasn't Sebastian. They knew it wasn't going to be Sebastian because they know something else. Someone or some somebody either said something or they've found something or something like that. They knew, look, we're not going out there. We know it's not Sebastian because we've got this info. And they're not telling us that info. And they won't tell us. Until either charges are pressed or the case is dissolved. That there could be I would think that they right. would look, it seems like they've already made up their mind or know have a conclusion of what happened to Sebastian. That is exactly how I have felt since the first week. Literally the first week. Within day, I mean within She's got no reason to lie, SG. She's got no reason to exaggerate or lie, you know what I mean? Her son could have probably been up walking with the dog handler. You know what I mean? We don't know if he's walking up by the side of him or if he's walking up behind him. We don't know. We just know he's walking up the road with the dog handler. And a lot of people would get on Facebook and like, you know, belittle our neighborhood and yell at us like, why aren't you guys out looking and why don't you guys have signs and why don't you have, if I was in that neighborhood, I would flood it with green. And uh, yeah, but you haven't been violated and you were a part of this where you had hundreds of cars a day driving up and down and taking videos and pictures of your house and, 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 and stopping and, t- and asking you questions and the news reporters being, you know, being out front of your house and, you know, you, you don't, you don't have, you don't understand where we are. And we just, we just want to just have some peace and some privacy. We're still, we are looking, we're out there. We're asking questions. We're talking to each other. We're on social media. We hang out flyers, you know, whatever. We're just not, we don't, why do we need a sign when we're in the neighborhood? I mean, we live here for heaven's sakes. Why do we need a sign? You know, I mean, we know what's going on. You know, if you drive through here, you know, this neighborhood belongs to him. Why do we need a sign to say, look for him? But anyway, um, I feel like from the very beginning it was massive, a massive search effort, but I just don't understand what they did with, if they found anything, what they did with it. Why are they trying to act like the camera, the footage, you know, did they find anything on the footage from what I'm being told from my neighbors that saw stuff on the footage and I asked them and they won't deny it. They won't argue with me. Why, why are they? And then when the TBI came and actually walked into my house, setting my living room uh, uh, couch and interviewed me, and I told them what I had heard and whatever. And then after that, he gave me his card and said, oh, and we, I promise you, I had 12 people every day for about three weeks from random places. I'm talking Canada. I'm talking UK. I'm talking uh, Hawaii, uh, Puerto Rico. They were trying to get into our private group. Why do you need to be in our private group? Why do you need to be in our neighborhood group? Gotcha. Just want to know stuff? I don't know. But I mean, we had just from the, they were coming out of woodworks trying to get a piece of the information. but. I, I they just shut down and every time I would send the TBI agent I send the story about what happened to my son and I and, and said I had it on you know video whatever and I said do you want to see this and you know I never he didn't even respond to me he didn't even respond and say I will let you know hold on to that nothing I didn't even get a response from him Weird. I called a, it seems as if they already know something and yeah. everything else in their mind is irrelevant yeah Weird. that's how I feel that's how I feel I can't prove it I mean I don't know for sure but that's how I feel. And that's what a lot of us feel like. I mean, a lot of us feel like I had four or five of my neighbors come over to my house one day and we sat in, in my house and, and talking about all this and kind of sharing stories and stuff of what they, we feel. And we all feel like something is going on. Something isn't right. Miss Bobby, uh, 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 somebody in the chat uh, asked if um, when you had that neighborhood vigil for, for, for Sebastian, were the prophets invited? Oh, yeah. It was all over our Facebook page. So they knew. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, they were in the, yeah, and we had planned it a week before. So it's not like it was last minute, throw it together. It was, a matter of fact, the ne- one of the neighbors that helped me organize it, she actually had posted it on her profile, like just on her, her, uh, 
as a posting and just said, you know, I'd love to have a vigil. Let me know if anybody is doing one. And I messaged her and said, hey, why don't we do this in our neighborhood? That way the family can come as well and it can just be our private neighbors. And she's like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea to me. So I put it on the Facebook page as a post. I tagged her in it and I said, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is where we're going to be. And then several people posted and asking what time we kind of actually kind of kept going back and forth about what day, what time and whatever. So did we go to their door and knock on their door and personally invite them? No, but we didn't do that with anybody. And we had a big group show up. And they would have, they know, they knew it. One was existing. They, instead, you said they brought two representatives, family members. That's the other thing is, there, it's, you, that's the other thing is, you know, for a fact, they knew because they, they sent the family. Yeah. yeah. How, were, how were, what, what did the family say? Like who, who the people that you said that came, uncle and aunt, right? Uncle and aunt, they said? Yes. What did they, did they say anything? Did they talk? Did they? They didn't really talk much. They just kind of stood there and listened to us, you know, introduce ourselves and, we went around the, the circle, was a, you know, quite a big circle. We went around the circle and everybody, you know, said their prayer and, and whatever. And then afterwards, you know, we just kind of said, hey, do you guys need anything? And we said, you know, do we need food? Can we set up a food train for you? Or, you know, is there, you know do, you need, do you need anything? And they both said, oh, we've got a lot of stuff. See, I like to take a Now, what did they say? What did CP and KP say about that feature? They didn't want it out in the area because... They didn't want everyone outside their house. Well, it wasn't outside their house. It was in the area. It could have been up the top of the grove, up the top of the road where the cars drive up and then drive around and go back down. That would have been big enough for the neighbours to turn up for a vigil. You know what I mean? It's just so hard for me to believe alleged neighbours, especially someone who lives on the other street. I must admit, oh, I must admit, like, I did say, how would she know if Faith had been at their house or not? Because the way she spoke, her house is at the top of the street, Kelly, Kelly Road, and it backs onto their porch, their back porch backs onto the construction site. Yep. So how would they know if Faith had been at their house or not? She wouldn't. How would she know when they was going in and out? She wouldn't. She has to rely on what the neighbours are telling her. Right? And we know Faith was there at Christmas because uh, Sebastian went to his dad's and Seth said he was on the phone for hours with her, talking to her. And then when she went home, in the new year, when the courts were all open again, they went and put a motion in to uh, like an injunction or something like that. So... Support. We're, we're, we're good. We're fine. Don't worry about us. We're good. We got plenty of support. Does the, uh, somebody asked in the chat, does the Proudfoots have security? Did the neighbor, did, did you guys know if they had, because because Katie worked at Brinks, right? Or Brinks Security well, System. That was the very first thing I asked my neighbor when she told me that Sebastian is on the spectrum. And I said, hold on a minute. Doesn't she work for Brinks? And she said, yes. And I said, she has a special needs child. She works for Brinks. Does she not have security or locks or some kind of like a safety, something to keep him from coming out? And she said, not that I'm aware of. Now, the people before them, I do not believe they had security. Um, they were older, elderly couples, so I don't even know if they cared. Um, but apparently they didn't because then Brinks came afterwards and installed. And I know that for a fact because she called me and said, well, they're getting security now. And I think Chris said that was because they felt like they were being threatened and all that kind of stuff, which I don't, I can't prove or deny whatever that's up to them. That's their business. But from what I understand, they did not have anything before that. So, um, interesting. Very, very interesting. Has, has the prophet has been back at their home. Like, are they there? She has been, I think she went back to work because she's been home and her van comes and goes. Um, I think Chris came in one weekend. I don't know, but I, I kind of just stopped. Like I was, I, I would drive by once every, you know, like maybe once a week just to see, you know, if, if they were there because they were there. And it was just like, you know, and Katie's right. I heard her say that she was they were trying to leave to kind of give us a break because we were getting overwhelmed. We were all getting very upset and very overwhelmed with all the traffic and stuff. And yeah, you know, I do appreciate her saying for recognizing it's, that. Um, however, yeah. I, I was really shocked um, because I felt like that if my kid was missing, 
I don't want to say I would handle it differently because I don't ever want to be put in that situation. And I, I don't want to like make, make karma come after me, but I, I just, I can't imagine leaving my house if my child was missing. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, she was being called out by that. I mean, she's claiming that yeah. she can't wait to come into the door, Bubba. And, right. uh, and, but, uh, but I'm not her. Over to Mississippi. I'm not her. And I, I can't, I'm not going to say that she did the wrong thing. Cause I have no business saying that. I'm just surprised. I do appreciate the fact that she did recognize that we were getting overwhelmed with traffic and whatnot. Um, so I do appreciate that. But, um, and we were, but I, I, I would just think that, you know, maybe Chris goes back to work. And What gets me is at the top of their road at Stafford Court Road, there was a camera, right? Because uh, I'll say who it was. It was Cluminati, Cluminati, whatever her name is. They did a drive around, and when they went up their road, they turned around, and at the top of their road, as they turned, there was a great big stand, like a tripod sort of stand, and a box and everything, and it had a camera on, and it's pointing down the road. And we said, oh, look, they're watching them from there. They're watching to see what's going on. Now, she mentioned earlier, there was that, like a heat-seeking camera there at the top, so that if he did come home during the night, it would pick up the body heat. Right? Why did they take that camera down once, uh, literally after, was it after the first interview? It's like within a week of them scaling back the search. Right? I'd say within a Yeah. Within a week, within that week of them scaling back. So f they scaled back the search on the Sunday. They told them on the Sunday they're scaling it back. By the following Sunday, that camera had been took down. Now, if the police or law enforcement or TBI thought for one minute that Sebastian was going to come home, they'd have left that up. They'd have left it up. But they knew he wasn't coming home. That's why they took it down. They knew he wasn't coming home. She stays there just in case. But, you know, everybody handles things differently. And if that's what she felt like she needed to do, then, you know, who am I to judge that? But they haven't, since this incident happened, they really don't come out at all, interact with anybody. You know, well, yeah, I mean, I've seen them interact with a neighbor very close to them a couple of times, um, be out talking to one of the neighbors, um, but I have not seen them out talking to anybody else. There's rumors like said, that there, there's rumors that they might be moving. You know anything about that? Have you heard? Is there? I keep, I've heard that so many times and I've, there's no confirmation of that. Um, Interesting. I've asked I've asked other we have a couple of realtors in our neighborhood and I've asked them and they've they've not it's like I have not heard any confirmation of that. Has um one more thing has the detectives or authorities ever go back to their house like in certain time like maybe like a week or two weeks after Sebastian went missing have they ever returned that you know of returned to the home? Oh yeah, they they came back. What was it, week two or three? They came back and basically started it all over again. Started the searching all over again, and they also reenacted the whole scene and they started it like what ten o'clock. Sunday night ish or was it something like that Sunday night going into the next the early the next morning to see if they could kind of like retrace each of the steps and you know, everything that happened. That type of deal? Mm, or yeah. Interesting, but nothing seems As like well they got their evidence and got something out of that possibly. If they did, they're not telling us. They're not. How's the neighborhood now? I think um it's getting better. I mean I'm noticing um, a lot of neighbors are getting out more and walking dogs again and talking. And um, I think people think that we're all like huddled together talking about everything that's going on. And it's not like that at all. I think we're all just trying to stay out of it, trying to stay, give them their space and kind of stay away from. Possible SG, possible. Hmm. That is possible. That the equipment was needed elsewhere for some other missing child. I'm doing a case tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, I'm doing a live about two young lads, both autistic, both gone missing. Everything and 
we just don't, I know for me, I don't want to get into their personal business. I just don't want to be that, that neighbor that's all like super nosy and thinks that she knows everything because I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't understand. This kid did not just vanish. He just didn't vanish. But does any neighbors think it was a kidnapping or like think their children are in danger? So that was the very first thing I asked on, on Wednesday when TBI came and sat down with me and talked to me. And I looked at her, I said, I get that you guys are being super quiet about this because it is still an investigation. However, if hold on, hold on. It wasn't an investigation on the Wednesday, love. They're still searching for a missing child. Are we right there? Am I right? It was only an investigation from the Sunday, which would make the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th. The first. Oh, no, 28, 28 days in, it in February. 26, 27, 28, 30, no, 1st, 2, which is Wednesday, Friday, 1st, the 4th, going back the 3rd or 4th of March, it became an investigation. It wasn't an investigation on the Wednesday. If this kid was kidnapped, don't you think you might want to tell us so that we can kind of lock our kids up and you know, be, be safe or whatever. And she, instead of her, and I guess is, you know, again, part of the investigation, she said, well, you should always do that. That's interesting. Yeah. They have a responsibility. I mean, if one of their theories is Sebastian got kidnapped and they never said Sebastian was kidnapped, but there was uh, no, there's, there's no, there, there were no cars that came up their street and then left it up their street and left. The only car that was ever seen was the one that was on Kellen that parked on the corner of Stafford and Kellen for about three or five minutes where the flashlights came towards it backed up and left and then the trash truck and then Katie's SUV and then the police or then the bu uh, school bus and then the police. So was there was no other car that ever drove up Stafford. Was it a car that the lights that went was, to or like an SUV or a car? Like what type of vehicle is it? Was it? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, don't remember. It just, they the words that where I was told was unidentified car. I don't know if it was an SUV or a car or what. Um, that was just what I was told. It was an unidentified car. And that was another thing is when I asked the, the lead detective, I said, um, you know, this car that was on Kellen, he was like, yeah, we already figured that out. That was an Uber. And I was like, no, the Uber was a neighbor on Devon that ordered an Uber about 530 to go to the airport. I know that. But the car sitting on, why would a car sit on Kellen if they were going up the street? How is she finding that information out? How is she finding that information out that apparently... Some person on Delling or whatever road it is, the road that runs along the back of theirs, where they said the garbage truck was, the logs from the garbage truck was, right? How would she know someone on that road ordered uh, an Uber for 530? Unless it was one of the neighbours who knew about the neighbour behind them going, you know what I mean? to get the customer to leave. I mean, you don't sit there. Coincidentally, at the same time, lights are flashing around, around the time. Well, at the same that same time, the tr trash truck would have been through there. So yeah. if you wouldn't have gotten that confused, why would a car be sitting on a road like around 3, 34 o'clock Monday morning? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, one thing uh, we, we I say, and it's the truth, the law enforcement is not uh, obligated to tell the public the truth. That's true. We have law enforcement the truth if we're being interrogated or questioned or whatnot in a sense because you could be you know charged with lying but they, they're not well, under well, any legal yeah, obligation. I, I mean morally you would think you, they, would, they would tell the truth but they don't legally have to they can lie to the public and they do so maybe they're keeping things close to the vest i was just really surprised how i felt yeah. like he got a little bit defensive with me when i mentioned that i was a neighbor and talking to the neighbors about their surveillance because my thought is this you know when if you were to ask an officer a direct question if he can't discuss it instead of arguing with me the response should have been i can't confirm or deny that i can't yep. discuss that we're still on investigation instead of him flat out lying about or you know like defending it and arguing with me why did he just say with well, that still part of the investigation i can't comment on that and i would have simply said okay you're right i understand yeah absolutely. But he didn't. integrity of the investigation no comment that's what i would have done i mean that's usually what they do why argue with me and try to convince me otherwise it's like he was trying to convince me leave that alone stop talking about it that's not part of this got you bobby is there anything else you would like to add that we didn't i didn't ask or anything that you want to put out there um that the public should know 
that we forgot? I don't think so. I mean, I think we pretty much covered everything. But we do like nosy neighbours, especially when she knew the neighbour that lived on the corner of Stafford Court. The one with the video footage. And I think there were other neighbours with video footage. Probably not on Stafford Court, probably on Kelling Drive or something like that. That has been handed in. She didn't like law enforcement behaviour that has no bearing on any of this in my... No, it doesn't. No. It doesn't have any bearing on it. They should, what they should have said is what they said. They should have just said, look, we can't, I can't confirm or deny any of this. It's an ongoing investigation. Oh, it's still early days. We're looking into everything. You know what I mean? And that would just shut her down. But to argue, like, to try and convince her, no, we know what it was, it's just going to pique her interest even more. So, but, let's have a look at the next one, shall we? Let's, where is it? Uh, one second. This one. Right, we're going to look at this and it starts. Hold on. I've got it written down. Is it this one? Yeah. This one. Hold on. It starts at. Oh, let's get to my light. Um, 108. Oh. One hour and eight minutes. Come on. Oh. Is this the one? Yeah. Right. They don't, I have no respect for them. Oh, it is. I don't, but that's. Mm -hmm. Trying to get it. One out eight hundred. Oh, go before late night. One fifty seven. Well, oh, too far. I've come this fucking. You can never get it on. Get on. You want it on. Well, I'll start it here. Okay. I don't handle real quick. Hey. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Listen, I promise you here, no one's going to disrespect. I'm just going to make this quick because okay. it's 11 o'clock at night. I've been busy all day. Um, okay. And I got an early morning. I've got searchers coming in again next week. Got places to go. Got to get what little sleep I can. Um, I understand. I sent out safe and assist. These people are nasty. Oh, they are. And no parent of a missing child should ever have to sit there and listen to the people slander him. And de 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 yep. I've listened to people call my son a sexual offender. That's Jay. I've listened to people call me one. Yep. All okay. right. I didn't have any relations with Sebastian's mother until she was way after the age of 18. Thank people you. need to get off their high horse. Agreed. Because I'll tell you right now, I don't have to do anything and God will knock you down. But I said cease and desist to make sure that there is proof in the legal system that I am not connected to these people. Okay. Yeah. That way I'm not sitting there and they can sit there and say whatever they want. Defamation is pretty easy when someone's sitting there for six hours know. on a live panel letting I people talk know. massive think... amounts of crap about me and accuse me of everything from putting a nail into Jesus Christ on a cross or pushing the red button for Biden. You know? Yeah. It's you just say whatever you want about me. But when you start talking trash about my son or you're using pictures of my son and stupid little things for click me bait because you guys want to make money. And when I say you all, I mean everybody who's out there. When my YouTube channel comes out and I sit there and I make people pay for a membership to listen to me give updates, I know that I'm going to receive nothing but negative attention about it. Nothing but negative attention because Lord knows I'm the child's father. I need to make sure I have flyers. I need more yard signs. 
I need more materials and more resources. And there's not enough. Absolutely. There is not enough until my son comes home. People want to talk about me being at work. That's my personal life. Get over it. You're not going to find out if I'm at work or not. It's none of your business. I've had people infiltrate my home. I've had people sit there and literally lie and have conversations that you just wouldn't have with a person. Not if you actually had a soul. And have people come in afterwards and call me on a live chat. And I didn't even know I was live and start asking me questions about stuff that I had no idea what was going on. That's pretty dirty. All right. And then mm -hmm. sit there. I get phone calls from Sumner. Who phoned him? I'm trying to think what YouTuber was that phoned him. Oh, I know he did a live. He went on live with Smiley once. Right? And I think it was before a vigil. And he didn't realise he was on live. And, she, and he said something. And he said, well, at least I'm not on live. And she said, oh, mic drop, you are. And went, oh. You know what I mean? He didn't realise he was on live on hers at first. On one of hers. But I don't think that is the one. I don't think that's the one. County and from TVI about everything that's going on. Well, they need to stay in their lane. Don't ask me what I have a civil attorney doing for me. All right. They need to be focused on investigating and finding my son. But every time one of these creators open their mouth, and I say that term very loosely because there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are not creators. All they are is we'll take what this person did and we'll go over it. Yeah. Yeah, you're and right. I'll tell you right now, they don't. I have no respect for them. I don't, but that's my personal opinion. And I don't care if somebody has respect for me or not. I'm looking for my son. See, okay, I'm playing this video now. We're going over this video, right? But I'm not going to slag. Oh, pardon my language. I'm not going to put a father down. I'm not going to bag mouth him. Apart from CP. But he's not a father. He's a stepfather. It's just... Whatever. Right? But I'm not going to sit and put down a father whose son is missing. He was at work. He was on camera. He works at a... What is it? A detention... Centre or whatever, I can't remember now what it is. Right, um, SG, perhaps you could help. Where, where is it he works at? <laughs> I can't remember what it is. And um, at these places, because there's cameras on every door, every corridor, you probably can't even go for a pee without being cut. No, not jail. Well, jail, but not. Yeah. It's where they keep them until they go to court and they go to prison. Yeah. We don't have that here. If you're sent down, if you get caught and you go to jail, prison, you go to prison. You don't have any detention centres and whatever. You go to prison and you sit in a prison until you go to court. Right. And so he's on camera from the moment he walks in that building if not before he walks in that building and he's on camera until he leaves that the premises because i should imagine they've got cameras outside watching the car car any cars coming up and people like that people coming up you know what i mean they're on full security at these places because Guess what, everyone? There's criminals in there. Bad guys. Right? So, <laughs> he's on camera. And so I'm not going to bash a bloke. His son is missing. He don't know why his son will go. Yeah, he has an alibi without a doubt. He's got the best alibi you can even think of. And then when you get people saying, 
Oh, well, he could pay someone. He knows people. He knows criminals. Uh, excuse me. His own sister had to put a GoFundMe up to help him pay for his rent, his gas, his electric and all that, to get flyers done, to get uh, signposts done, to have T-shirts made, you name it, yeah? Where was the money to pay this so-called person to go and kidnap his son? If he had to get, if they had to get a GoFundMe up to pay his rent while he's out looking for his son, where, where, uh, where did they get the money from to pay this so-called person to go and kidnap his son? Because someone is not going to do this for nothing. They're going to want the readies. So I can understand when he's getting mad. And I said, I will dance with the devil and show the devil a few moves in order to find my son. Oh, wow. I will this wow. And that means I'll do whatever I need to do within the limits of the law because me going to jail doesn't help my son. Right. But I will never stop looking for him. And anybody that wants to be an obstacle in my way, I feel sorry for them. Because karma's a bitch. And God will knock them down. You're right about that. I, I, I want to clear right. something up with you while you're here. Uh, this, and this just so you know, you. I sent six people cease and desist. Six. six not 50. Okay. Yeah, six. Not 50 like T-Rev is talking about. And I tell you what, anybody that's out here on a YouTube, whether they're a creator or whatever they want to classify themselves as, if they're literally out there spreading Sebastian's case in a positive light, not a negative light, there's enough negativity in this world. People say I start drama. Don't ask me questions that start drama. I'll give you an honest answer. You may not like the fact that I give an honest answer, and other pe people may not like the fact that I am brutally honest. But they'll even say one of those de declarations that Katie wrote in my divorce that I tell people the truth. And I literally will sit there and state whether it has anything to do with it. And that always used to piss her off. She hated it when I talked about anything that was going on in the house. She was like, That's a random stranger. I've been like, Well, I can't, I can't talk to you about it. I'm going to talk to a random person that doesn't know anything and bounce the ideas off of them because they might have the answer. God may say, this is how you should answer this gentleman and give me the answer because God works in mysterious ways. That crazy person that's asking for change out there on the street corner. That person could have an answer. The first places that I hit were homeless in Camlets. I've been yeah. homeless before. Thank you to my ex-wife for making me homeless. Why didn't I get full custody? I was homeless living in a vehicle. I praise God every day. I got joint custody. Do you think I wanted full custody? Without a doubt. I should have my son living with me right now. But yeah, I'm still a suspect of my son's disappearance. You guys don't know what kind of effect that has on a person's psyche. To know that I'm getting phone calls from law enforcement about me sending out cease and desist from my attorney who is doing her job because she wants to make sure that people in the legal system know that these people do not represent me. You know what, if I was Seth, you know what I would do? I'd walk up to some accounting, sheriff's office, and I'd say, charge me or clear me. Either charge me or clear me. I'd call the bluff. I'd say, charge me or clear me. I really would. Tony should be a calming force for Seth and defend Seth. Tony is legendary PR and represents Seth in my represent Seth. Well, I've got my own feelings on Tony. Right. The fact that when he come on, he said to Seth, don't go on YouTube. And Seth said, really? Do I have to? He said, yes. What does Tony then go and do? Oh, he wants to build his TikTok account up. TikTok is for youngsters. In fact, I've got a TikTok account, and I don't know when the last time I used it. Fucking weeks ago when I posted a little short. Um, some missing child I was covering. 
I'll just use it for that, for little one-minute videos. Music v sort of videos, you know what I mean? I would not even dream of going on TikTok and building up my um, subscription on there, so whatever, to do a live. I'd rather go on X and do a live than go on TikTok. But that's what he's doing. He's doing it to build his own people up. I'm not happy with Tony either, but poor Seth felt so desperate he went on YouTube himself. Yes. Yes. And you know what? See that picture I've got up on the screen? It's got Seth Rogers Speaks Out. I should have put Seth Rogers Speaks Out. The voice for Sebastian. Because he was and is the voice for Sebastian. Tony isn't. Right? He isn't. And if Seth wants to keep him on, then who am I to say different? You know what I mean? As my mum taught me, you plant a seed... Right with my husband, she just said, just plant that seed in his brain. You want something doing? Plant that seed. And it might take a day, it might take a week, it might take two years, but he'll do it. Right? Or he'll agree with it. Right? And I'd say, and I used to plant little seeds in my husband's head. And then you come along like a, a week or so later and go, oh, I'm going to do this. I think we, I think we should have this colour in the living room, or I think we should do this in the bedroom. And I go, Ooh, I said that two weeks ago, and you was going, no, no. But my mum would say, just plant that seed, right? And this is what some YouTubers are doing: is planting that seed out there for Seth. He'll come at. Eventually, he'll see what Tony is for. He'll see. You know what I mean? But because he isn't helping Seth, he's put out misinformation. They, people scream at us YouTubers for putting out misinformation. Oh, you should fact check. You should check everything you're told. They used that guy, that whatever his name was now, that young lad. They used him. And they got information off him. Well, Tony did. Right? Because, and then everyone's going, oh, on, that isn't true. Oh, wow, well, such and such told me. So he's throwing that other guy under the bus. Right? So that other guy's now pulled away and said, I don't want nothing to do with it. And I don't blame him. It was like that vigil, the last vigil I had. What was that comment Tony said? Oh, everyone wanted to talk to Seth, but we had to stop him. We had to make sure that I was there for the right reason, sort of thing. Something like that. And I just got this vision of Tony jumping in front of Seth and taking the bullet. You know what I mean? It's like this bodyguard for Seth. Right? I hope he does. But until that day comes, we just got to stick with Seth. Just stay with Seth and Sebastian. Focus on Katie. She's the one who last saw him, last spoke to him. Right? She was in the she was the only one in that house. She was the one who spent the day with him. The one who went for the evening meal with him. Right? The one who drove him home. The one who told him to go to bed. The one who said, Was that you, Bubba, who fell out of bed? No, Mum. You have, you know what I mean? She's the last one. She was it. She's ground zero. Katie is the ground zero. It starts and it finishes with Katie. Not Seth. 
So I wish everyone would back off and leave Seth alone because he's got enough on his plate without everyone else going on at him. Yeah, he vetted him and said he'd protect. That's what I, that was it. And I just had this vision of someone coming up with, I don't know, say a water pistol, right? And uh, Tony jumping in front of Seth and taking that bullet. You know what I mean? I thought, oh my God, what are you, the bodyguard? Come on. These are every day Joe Bloggs people, right? Who are there for Sebastian. And I just wanted to give some reassurance and support for Seth. They're not out to gunning down, for Christ's sake. And it's on a TikTok the other day. I was working on a YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry, but there's one part of this TikTok video. And as he's talking, there's three of us on this panel on TikTok. And he's talking. And as he's talking, some, fi some like, it looked like a shadow or something come up on the screen of his of his picture, of his profile pic. And I'm not sure, you don't, oh my God, it was, it, I don't know what it was, but it, it didn't look right, put it that way. <laughs> right? And, um, so if, Seth will come to his senses eventually. He'll see that Tony isn't helping him. I thought it was ridiculous Seth is in a guard is a guard in a jail. I know. I know. Even Seth said, I don't need a protecting. I don't need it. Everywhere he went, he was like hovering. Like the little mother hen around him. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just waiting to take that bullet for him. I, I thought, oh Christ sake, Tony, grow up. Stop watching all these movies. You're not the bodyguard. Yes. Did you see it? Did you click on, go on the link and click it? On the link. Oh, my God. I, I typed it in because I was watching it on my TV. So I've come on and I typed in the YouTuber's channel. And I went to the, like, the time it says, 12.02. And I'm going, hold on. So I'll go back again. I literally had to rewind it a second or two back eight, for about five times. I thought, is it a little character they've got on the screen or something and it's not showing fully? I don't know, but it did look right. It didn't look right. And that is Tony. You know what I mean? And I thought, oh, my Lord, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? See, I watch a lot of YouTubers' channels, and I see people's names come up in chat, right? If I'm on my laptop, but I don't normally comment. But a lot of the time, I'm watching it on my TV because I'm busy doing something else on my laptop. So I watch it on my TV. And I'm listening to it. But I was just sitting down having a coffee. Right? And I typed it in. I'm sitting here. And I've typed it in. I've gone to that. And I've got my coffee in. I had to pick my coffee up. I'm joking. I'm surprised my laptop is still working. Because when I seen this little clip, it was just a, a click like that. As quick as that. It was on the screen, off the screen. But when I seen it, I, I, knew, I literally spat my coffee out. How my laptop is still working, I don't know. But, no, so, Seth, Seth does need help because at that time he was also going back to work. 
So we needed someone who could um, do the interviews and all that. Lot. But Tony, isn't, he don't know how to do interviews. He doesn't. And now he's just getting too big-headed. And therefore, they have been sent a cease and desist. So law enforcement did not want you to send out those letters? No, law enforcement has called me about them because these everybody's up in arms that I sent out a cease and desist. There's some oh, of these people live right there in Sumner County. Three of them do. T-Rev oh. lives there. Kumati lives there. And so does uh, T-Rev's girlfriend. I'm not even going to speak her name. She ain't working. Whoa. All three of them live there. And you know what? T-Rev has never showed up for a search. Oh, he bought hot dogs and buns. Appreciate it, buddy. I didn't appreciate everything else you did, like taking a picture of me while I was in my recliner in my house. Oh, so it was T-Rev who took that picture of him in his house. That's not right. He shouldn't have put that out. Yes, I saw it. He's a apparently second <laughs> sweat. <laughs> because that YouTuber is like me, he don't actually show, if it's like this sort of interview where you've got them on a screen, where they're just talking, right, he, he doesn't show the video, he just he has a picture up on the screen, and, um, but he can see the video. Like, I can. I can see the video. But when it's going out to everyone else, they just see that screen thing I put up. Right? So, <laughs> when he said go to 1202, I'm literally typing it in as fast as I could. Pulling it up. Oh, my God. I literally spat my coffee out. <laughs> That's not on, no. That's... It's, <laughs> Stepping into my sanctuary and violating my sanctuary. Because not only did you violate my sanctuary, but this is also my son's sanctuary. I didn't appreciate that. Klumati showed up for, you know, one search. One search. Yeah. Only one search. And she acted all nice and friendly. Yes, she did. Introduced herself by her name, not by her, you know, never once told me that she was a YouTubist. None of that sort of stuff. But I treated her like a regular researcher. Searcher. Hi, thank you. I appreciate your help. And then she turns around and plays, you know, I want to be number six on, you know, CP's list of marriage or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. People want to talk trash about me, but people want to look at me and tell me I'm trash and that I'm despicable because I have what an opinion and no. attitude. No, you don't. My son is missing. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody who's never been in my position has the right to tell me anything. All right. Okay. Those that do have been in this position, I've spoken to, and I get different opinions from other people. And people want to, you need to get rid of this person on your team. No, I get rid of people that I watch their activities. I watch their actions. I listen to their words. And when actions and words don't meet up, something is wrong. I've always been a person that explains to my son that anybody can say anything, but your actions will speak louder to your words. What CP okay. did to my son is horrific. My son cleans his room. Why? Because I use logic with him. Sebastian, you can't find this toy. You know why you can't find this toy? Because I had to come and clean up your room while you were gone. Now, if you clean up your room and you put things back, when you come back in here, you will know where everything is because you've put it in its special spot. Exactly. You didn't make him clean it up and go take his things to the trash, right? Make him throw his Hell no. Thing. Hell no. My grandson and my granddaughter together, I can go through their bedroom. I've got to do their bedroom tomorrow because I've got to put clean bedding on and everything, right? And um, I'll go in. I'll get their bedroom spotless. Spotless. Right? And it'll be like that for two weeks. Then when I've got them on the weekend, in two weeks' time, he'll come. He'll go in the bedroom. Or she'll go in the bedroom. He don't normally do it straight away. He normally, he's normally very good lately at the moment. He just gets the bricks out or something. But no, Olivia, she goes in. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, grand, I'm a grandson, Alice. They go in and they get the boxes and the tubs and they just tip it all out. All out on the floor. Oh, really? 
did you have to do that? So, you know what I'll do? I'll just, because it's just one day, it's literally on the Saturday they do it. He, do, he doesn't do it on a Friday, he'll do it with his sister on a Saturday. And by the time they finish playing, it's bath time. Well, dinner time, then bath time, then bedtime. So what I do, I think, you know what? I'm not going to pick all this up because they're only going to tip it out again. So I just literally make a path. Clear everything away from their bed. If I have to push it to one side, right? I'll push it to one side so they can get in and out of bed without stepping on anything. So they've got a clear pathway. And that's what I do. Then on the Sunday, once they've gone home and I've come home and I've had something to eat and drink, I go in there, or sometimes I leave it to the Monday, probably the Monday, I go in there, pick it all up, tidy it all up, make the beds properly, strip it all down, put new bedding on, whatever, and do that. But my, my grandson would say, I can't find this, I say, can't yet, well it's in there, and he'll just go and tip everything out. Things away. Yeah, you know, hmm. this might be seen kind of selfish, but I'm a parent. I'm on a limited income because I, I work for the county. All right. I make 50000 a year. I work 12-hour shifts, and I deal with, with murderers and inmates that I believe can change. Absolutely. All right. And I treat them like they're human beings. Yeah. Because I expect them to change. Are my, are my sights set too high? Probably. But that's not for me to judge. I'm there to make sure they're safe while they're in jail before they go to prison. All right. I have a badge. I'm supposed to uphold that badge. I don't hide behind that badge. I am the representation of what the badge is supposed to be. Honor, integrity, courage, commitment. Only I can do that. Mm -hmm. I've had inmates. Oh, you hide behind the badge. No, I'm the same person. When you see me at Walmart in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, grabbing a gallon of milk and orange juice to go home so that my son has milk and orange juice to drink. Pick him up, whatever he wants whatever he wants to cook for dinner or whatever he wants me to cook for breakfast, so on and so forth. I work. When my son is here with me, I work with him so that everything in this house is his. He knows what is his. He has to have room to grow. You cannot sit there and keep somebody trapped in a cube and expect them to grow. That does Absolutely. not work. Absolutely. 100%. People want to give me grief for how I raised my son. Well, I am sorry. I didn't think I should take him out on the street corner and pick a fight with somebody and show him what a real beating was. Yes. Did I tell my son I was going to bust his butt? Sure did. did. Did I use that exact verbiage? Probably not. Hello. I'm a first time parent. Hold on. What was that you said? I never had to clean up after my children. I was very strict. I allowed, to, I allowed them to mess up one room and pick it up. Then they could mess up another room. <laughs> No, see, they just keep the mess to their bedroom, right? And I must admit, if I went in there and I started picking it all up, my granddaughter would come and help me. But then the other day, I was like, I've got these big letters that I can put up on the wall, and I've got to get these sticky things to put it up on the wall. And at the moment, I'm on a heater in my bedroom, and they kept, keep getting knocked off. And um, as I walk past it, or my grandson, or whoever walk past it, they knock them. So they get knocked off. And my grandson said, Gran, your letters are on the floor. I said, I know, babes. I said, I'll pick them up in a minute. I'll do it. And he did. He picked them up for me, and he placed them back on where they go. Didn't put them in the right way, or stuck them in the right way. You know what I mean? But he put, picked them up. And if I really pushed him, I could say, right, come on, let's go and tidy your bedroom up. You know what I mean? And he would. He would do it. But I can't see the point in cleaning it up for that one night because they're going to be in bed. Then the next morning they get up and they just tip it all out again. So I'll just leave it out. And then once they've gone home, it takes, what, five minutes to pick all their little toys up and put them back in the right boxes and put them away. Right, five, ten minutes, then, what, five, ten minutes to make the beds, five minutes to put the vacuum over the floor, you know what I mean? It takes, I spend about 20 minutes doing their bedroom, that's it. So, 
I think I'm not gonna but I'm not gonna moan on much once a fortnight. It's not every day, it's once a fortnight. And they would help if I said, Come on. It's like many times I've gone to put toys away in the living room that my granddaughter's brought through. And I said, Let's and I'll go to pick it up. Like right, just before dinner. I'll help Gran. I'll help you. Right? But she's so comical, my granddaughter. Right? Went home, took my grandson home Sunday. Right? And he was in his mum's room. Right? Don't know where. I think he may have been hiding. I'm not sure. Anyway, she's come to him. She's got him this uh, smoothie. He wanted a smoothie. So she said she'd get him one. So she went, his mum gave her this smoothie. And she went into the bedroom and she went, Alice. And because he didn't answer her the first time, she went, Alice. And I thought, oh, my God. That's such a brummy accent she just said then. The way she said it was so brummy. I thought, this child is so confusing because she's got the brummy accent. She brings that out in certain words and certain things she says. Like, you know, if she's saying something in, like, once she stood there in my living room and my grandson walked out, he said something as he was walking out, and she stood there and she put her hand on her hip. She's three years old. And she said, just you wait there. And I stood, I sat there and I looked at him. I swear to God, that was my mum. You know what I mean? The way she said it, just you wait there. I thought, she's turning into my mum. She's turning, in. even on Sunday when she went in and she said, Ellis, and then because he didn't answer her, she shouted at him. And the way she shouted, I said, that's just like my mum. She's being like my mum again. It's like having my mum here. Honest to God. But then... She'll come out some, and she'll talk, she's talking, and you hear the Dundonian accent in her. But then she'll throw in the uh, grummy bit of accent. I'm going, keep to one accent, please. It's very confusing. Yeah, I do spoil them. They get away with a lot with me. It's a never-ending, everyday learn, so learn something new. Yeah. So I used a video game, which is better than watching an R-rated movie with a bunch of people being shot and having heads cut off or, you know, things like that. No, I took a video game that we have played and I put the blood mode on so you can actually see it because before there was none. I turned it off. He doesn't need to see all that. But yet I get criticized. And most of these people that criticize me don't even have kids. Yeah, I, I honestly don't hold that. I have never once said I was perfect, nor will I ever say I will, am perfect. Sebastian, my son may think that I walk on water and I never want to lose that. I never want to lose that because that means I'm his hero. That's right. You're right. And and you don't deserve Have I have failed it. my son? Oh, yes. I am my worst critique ever. None of these people I hear saying anything can make me feel worse than I already am oh, until they sit there and start talking about my son being a sexual offender or any of that. My son so was they, with me all last year. Yeah. On the Christmas break, Faith wasn't here. I saw that rumor growing out there. Sebastian was with me before Faith even got here. So people need to shut that rumor up. We all did. right. Trust me, we have fought diligently to that's make sure that that's not true. That's missing. That's right, and that should never. That I've never heard that rumor about S Sebastian and Faith. Never. All I've ever heard is that every time Faith was at the house. Sebastian would go to his dad's. So Sebastian was never around Faith because CP didn't want him around his daughter. So why people are putting this that rumour out, which I've not heard, but like I said, I haven't been watching a lot of channels because a lot of them now are just as Seth said, he'll say, like, he's done this interview, and I can guarantee you there's been people out there today twisting every flipping word he has said. They twist it. And I'm so fed up of hearing that off of the YouTubers. 
If you got, if you want, Christ, I've been covering other cases. Right? I've been covering other cases. Okay, I don't get the viewings. Because people don't want to hear about that, apparently. From my own, from what I can see. People don't want to hear about uh, Whitney, Hat, uh, yeah, Whitney Hatfield and that other lad, James. Yup. Oh. Yablonski. They don't want to hear about that. They don't want to hear about Laurie Page. They probably won't want to hear about the two boys I'm talking about tomorrow afternoon. They're both autistic, and I think 12 and 13, or 12 and 11 and 13, or something like that. Both aut autistic boys gone missing. And I'm, you know what I mean? I will sit here for an hour or more, and I could have no views. Because people don't want to hear that, because there's no drama to it. They want to hear anything where... I'm showing videos with Seth or Seth. No, I won't show videos of CP and KP. I won't. I know if I did, I'd probably get more views. But I'm not doing it for clicks. You either watch my videos or you don't watch my videos. Simple as, you know what I mean? I'm not here for that. I'm here to get their names and their pictures out there. So... But all right, they will twist this. They'll twist every word he said. That should have never come out of anybody's mouth. And believe you me, here and, and in a lot of places I know, Seth, it's not, it won't be spoken. And we shut it down. That There's nothing to even. That but is there are, spoken. there are YouTubers out here that promote that stuff. Right. They got cease and desist because they're nasty and vile things. Well, they they, ha they have an agenda, right? They're playing up to Christopher Proudfoot. They wanted him on panel because he, they're getting the views from him being there yep. because he acts like such an ass. That's what I've just said. If I had a video up of Chris, I'd probably get more people watching. Yep. You know, exactly. we could all act like an ass. And that there is nobody in this world that can't act like one. But what it comes down to is that he's not looking for Sebastian. His family's That's not right. looking for Sebastian. That's his own right. mother, Sebastian's own mother, is not looking for Seb for Sebastian. It's insane. It's craziness to that get in a camper. It, to get in a camper and go three and a half hours away from your house with your child. Well, it's three hours and thirty-seven minutes. Yeah. Thank you. How foolish of me. You're exactly right. That was his you know. Let's break this down because Lord help us. We may or may not get stuck. Yes, get correct. It's three hours thirty-seven minutes. You know what I mean? Don't forget the extra 17 minutes on it. You know what I mean? It's not three hours, 30 minutes. Three hours, 30 hours. Well, extra seven minutes, sorry. It's three hours, 37 minutes. Behind a semi on Route 40. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid just it because is. nothing is ever finite. Everything is infinite. There's no, it takes three minutes to do this. That's bullshit. You ask anybody. There's too many holes in their stories. Oh, mm -hmm. it's just incredible. It's incredible. I know where I was at, and it really upsets me that they haven't cleared me. They yeah. have literally pulled over a year of my phone records. They have pulled, they have taken all the electronics. Yeah, I want my son to have his stuff back. I want my son to be found and walk into his room, and it yeah. be set up just like it was when he went missing. So that he can start readjusting back to life. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and if yeah. nobody has an autistic child, then they don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But my son, when he came home, he would walk into his room and everything is left just like he picked it up and put it. Yep. That's his comfort. That's, That's his, comfort. his sanctuary within our sanctuary. And what well, I'll tell you something now. I where I live, there's two blocks, two blocks of flats. And I used to live in the one opposite where I live now. And even to this day, my grandson would say, uh, you lived there, didn't you, Gran? Yes, babes. But you've got a new place now, haven't you? It's still cozy, my new flat, my new place. Even though I've been here since when? 20, 
2020, I moved into 2020. Since 2021, March 2021, 15th of March 2021, I moved in here. So like 21, 22, 22, 22, 22. Coming up to three, four years, right? Yeah, it still calls it my new place. And luckily, the flat I got is the same layout as the flat I had in the other high-rise. So it wasn't too much of um, a new... He, he literally walked in. He had the same bedroom, right? He had everything in that bedroom was the same as what it was in the other flat. The living room. We had the same furniture, well, apart from a sofa. We had the same furniture. Um, the kitchen, I had to buy all new white goods. So, yeah, but the kitchen was the same layout. So everything to him was the same, just a different, different block. So I was happy about that because it wasn't too much of an adjustment he had to make. It's funny is he doesn't, when he's at my house, he spends more time in the recliner than he does in his own room. Because he'd rather be out here in the living room where I am than in his room like he is at his mom and Chris's. He stays in his room there. Yeah, because I don't think they allow him to bring his toys out into the living room or into another room of the house. I don't think they allow him to have his toys anywhere else in the house. His toys are alone, are only in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Yet you hear about her talking about how she sit and do puzzles with him and build things with him. I can't see that happening. I really can't see her doing that with him. Right? They go on about how he loves the playground. You don't hear about how they took him to the playground. Yet Seth will tell you what he does and where they go. But you don't hear nothing of Kate. Katie about, well, on, this, on the uh, Saturday morning, we went to this playground area. He had fun there. In fact, I want to know why she never took any photos of him on that Sunday. She took photos of him on the Saturday because she shoved the picture on her phone into Seth's face when he got there on the Saturday, on the Monday. See, he was happy. He was happy. That was on the Saturday. Right? But she got no photos from the Sunday. I've not heard anyone mention that before. Yeah. Here, he lives in, in, in my shitty two bedroom with a garage you know 900 square foot place that i pay rent for that my rent has increased since i moved here in october of 2020 my rent has gone from 700 to over a thousand dollars and i don't move because he is used to this yeah mm -hmm. and i want to say room. i want to say something own. on your behalf about that real quick okay because i'm tired of everybody saying uh, everything you say has something to do with money no what he's saying is He's willing to rip himself off by not finding something cheaper because he or wants bigger. his child to have a home that he he is safe in. And he, yeah, I have a child on the spectrum too, Seth, so I get what So you, you know how it is. Yes. I change, is, it, change is constant, but if you can limit what little change, yes, then it does them so well. Yes. And then when he comes home to you, it, he's home where everything's where you left it. For I understand. Yes. More than you know. And I'm so sorry for what you're going through. I tell you, it, it grips my what, heart. If I get my son back, I don't care. I'll go through even more. But I want my son, I want him found. I want him returned home to me. And all these people out here, I hope like hell you never have a child and have to go through anything resembling what I'm going through. Not even for 30 minutes. It's been over 100 days for me. It's been even longer because it's been seven more days. So sorry, Seth. So sorry. And it's just there's there's evil people out there. There's people that are ne you know yeah, okay. negative naysayers, ones that just love to start drama. Well, you ask questions and I answer questions, and the questions you ask are, are meant to start drama. 
and I can't help that I answer questions. But if I don't answer the questions, I can't win for losing. And I'm not trying to win anything. I'm just trying to find my son. Seth, I just want to tell you one thing. I, I am with you 100%. And I know that you love your son. I know that you are 100% in finding your son. I'm not, from the very start, that's how I felt. And I am not going to change my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I do want, I need to ask you this because I want to clear this up. You, it's been going around that you are asking for money for interviews. Can you, can you clarify if, if that is true or not? I, nobody's giving me nothing for interviews. There you go. Wow. Uh. I didn't even go to CrimeCon because I was out searching that day. I couldn't see myself going and being around people instead of I'm being out trying to find my kid. This is crazy, man. Yeah, there should probably have been some really good resources for me there. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But, but you know that most of those people that were there, except for some of the FBI agents, I have their phone numbers. I could call them. Yeah. Because they've already reached out to me. I just didn't see the point of being there. Well, I mean, in all honesty, I'll tell you, you you weren't even there and people were already losing their mind that you were. So it probably is a good thing that you didn't go. That's it's. I know I can understand that when it, I heard people saying, have we gone to the crime, crime con or whatever it's called? I thought, well, I'm sure if he'd gone there, I, it'd be Nancy Grace, she just singing. Um, Vinnie Politan, he just singing. Um, what's his name? Dolly Vision. He just seeing him. You know what I mean? There's other YouTubers there as well. They just seen him. And I swear, you know, if someone had seen him there, they'd clip clipped a photo and posted it on a Facebook page somewhere. ridiculous this is what youtube is it's it's, it's nuts and when you, you have know, a green oh it makes me so mad for the longest i've been people have been drilling this into my head home. for you know a couple months now youtube is social media but when i opened up my first youtube account back in the 2000s was to listen to music people yeah it was just watch music videos do it yourself videos there wasn't all this stuff that's on it now so yeah i never really classified this as social media to me MySpace, that was social media. A lot better than Facebook because at least you had to know how to code. And I had a MySpace. I've had Facebook too, but it's just horrible. It is. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's been years. It's been years since I had a Facebook. I used my Facebook account to save mo videos of Sebastian and pictures. Yeah. Because I had hard drives fried on me and I lost pictures. And I was like, I need some place to be. You know what? I can use my Facebook profile and just make it private. And nobody can see it. Yeah. And I save pictures there. I've got pictures of me and Sebastian at the zoo. Videos of me and Sebastian at the zoo watching the piranhas eat because that's what he wanted to do. So we had to make sure <laughs> that we were one of the first ones into the zoo. We had to make sure that we had gotten all the way over to the fish area in there before they fed them because they fed them at the same time every time every morning. And we literally – and we were there to watch all of like 15 seconds of them devour this huge chunk of, of meat. And he oh was like, that goodness. was awesome. And I couldn't, even, <laughs> I I couldn't even get my phone up, which was one of these old flip phones. To oh, come on. To record it fast enough before they devoured it. Yeah. And I was like. What's up with my internet? Oh. Well, you want some pictures of you next to the piranha? It was like, sure. He loved the piranhas. Then, Bless his little heart. <laughs> and then off to watch the snakes. Off to sit there and look at all the other animals, you know? Oh, my He's an animal lover. He's always been. Yes, oh, cats are his favorite. <laughs> we had a bearded dragon when we were in California. This was her name. She was beautiful. Oh, my But God. when I wasn't allowed to have her, she died of scale rot. So oh. did the next snake that Katie bought him. So sorry. All right. Uh, so he liked reptiles, huh? That was his. Uh, and then.
see, he had cats with Katie. Yeah, Sebastian had two cats. She, uh, CP come into their life and he said, well, it's either me or the cats. What does she do? Get rid of the cats. Um, then he gets a snake. Well, they get quite a few snakes. But because they hadn't got time to sit with him and persevere with him, work with him, to look after this snake, they got rid of him. Then he gets the two dogs, these two little dogs. Right? And so far, we haven't heard nothing about the dogs, where the dogs are. Have they still got the dogs? Makes me wonder. The cats, just animals in general. Animals in general. But when we live in, because we lived in Spring Valley, California for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had two dogs. And we had goose. And my ex threw a fit because I got rid of the dogs. Well, Sebastian was taking one for a walk. And the dog took off after another dog and dragged my son down the sidewalk. Oh, my goodness. And, no, you're not going to hurt my kid. Right. I had two of them. All right. And I wanted to train them to be able to work with Sebastian. He's autistic. But when that happened, couldn't do it. It was like, and I gave them away to good homes. I didn't sell them or anything like that. I literally turned around, gave one to the guy that lived across from us who had another place to live down in Mexico. And he took him out and took Abel out to a range. And Kane, I gave to one of the ladies at his school because she had just put her dog to sleep because her dog was old. Oh. And I was like, I tell you what, I've got, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a pity. You know, he was Stafford Razor Cross. Gray, beautiful, beautiful pups. All right. I'm like, they're a little over a year old. They're still puppies. And I was like, you can have him. And I gave 50 pounds of dog food to her and gave her, you know, cane. I was like, here you go. You know, and Sebastian didn't even realize the dogs were gone for two weeks. Two weeks that they were gone. And then I finally took the, the doggy door out of the hallway. And he walked up and he was like, why'd you do that, dad? The dogs are going to come eat my toys. And I looked down and I was like, son, you had one job and that was to feed and water the dogs in the morning before I took you to school. When was the last time you fed and watered the dogs? And he was like, oh, I guess I should feed and water them. I was like, son, I already gave them away to new homes. And he was like, oh, I was like, don't worry. I gave them to good homes, though. He was like, okay. You know, he was younger then. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, he wasn't attached to him like I was. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you this because I, I really want to clear this up too because this is another one that's all nagging my soul. There, well, it's someone's going to twist that. Someone will come up and twist that about the dogs. Right? Oh my God. You're just as bad as CP. He got rid of all these animals. But these dogs, he was training. He wanted to train to work with Sebastian. But when those dogs dragged him along the road, we thought, no, I can't have that. And that's why he decided to rehome them. People, there are certain creators that keep saying this over and over, that Sebastian was going to be made to live with you because he was being punished. No, he wasn't. Can you please clarify that? Because I don't believe that's to be the case at all. I'll clear it up with this comment. While I was homeless in California going through a divorce and finally got the restraining order and everything cleared up in the court system where everything that somebody had stated about me was proven false. There you go. And there was no, <laughs> nothing could be proven that anything she said was <laughs> legitimate at all, but everything that I stated was legitimate. Clear down to police reports. For my son to tell me that he'd rather live in the car with me than in that house with his mom, that should tell oh. you. Yeah. My son wasn't being punished to come live here with me. He thought he was being punished with online school. But he there needed to get into therapy and he needed to have that year of just being online school. And what people don't realize is that he'd have been going to online school, which I still have him registered for and enrolled. I'm just hoping that I have him found and back to me before school starts. But he was going to school with one of with his with his godbrother. Because his godparents live up here in Clarksville too, which is why I live up here. 
I have a, a, a question. Uh, someone that wanted me to ask you this too. The day that they called you, uh, Chris called you to tell you that it right here, Jane, I see it, babe. Jane says, can Seth please explain to us that this call, uh, he called you and told you Sebastian was missing. And when you arrived at the house, what Katie did with her phone to you. They had the picture of, of Sebastian at Costco shoved it in my face and was like, look, see, he was having a good day. What? Like, That's what does so that mean bizarre. to me? What does that mean to me? Crazy, Seth. And Seth, does she not talk to you ever by herself? Because I noticed that Chris says, like, you, he keeps, he kept in contact with you. Would Katie not co parent with you one on one? Sometimes it was difficult. Sometimes okay. we could have, we could have, I mean, sometimes co parenting is hard. It is hard, but you will do whatever you can to make sure that your child is okay. Oh, absolutely. But and, I refused, and, mm -hmm. I refused to continue certain punishments from that house at my house because he didn't do it at my house. I don't absolutely you. right. You're absolutely right about that. I teach co-parenting classes. You are right about that. And I, go. I did try to correct that. I heard people saying that if, if the kid gets in trouble at one house, the, the um, punishment should spill over to the other. And I said, that is I not believe that only depends on what he did wrong. I agree with that. Well, if I he had sat there and hit a teacher or something, yeah, I don't approve of putting your hands on anybody, especially a female. Oh, hell no. So me and him are going to have a nice long talk for that hour that we get here, and I'm going to ask him what he thinks his punishment should be. But that's only going to be after I find out what his punishment has been at his mom and Chris's. And, and that would be a, a specific example of where both parents would have to be called in for that particular type of infraction, right? Right. Where it would be but both correct. Like if you buy, like if your bedtime's 10 o'clock, kid stays up to 1030, 1045, and you say, okay, well, you're grounded this weekend. That grounding should not happen at the co-parent's house. I've seen situations where one parent was actually weaponizing that so that every time the kid went over to the dad's house, he had to be grounded for the dad's weekend. So Yeah, no, that's my weekend with him, not your you weekend to control him. That's exactly right. correct. And, and I told Katie a long time ago, when you divorce me, you lose all the protection that I give you. As in, you're no longer my spouse. And yeah, this may sound harsh or rude or whatever, but that also means I don't have to treat you like I would my loved one. Yep. Now that's because true. you have you violated your vows. You have stepped upon these vows that you took in front of somebody that are supposed to be in front of God, and you have trashed these vows because you don't want to work with me anymore. Got it. Well, I'll work with you when it comes to Sebastian. But don't expect the same treatment from me that you got when we i was married I, people I think understand. i'm not over her no i still have good memories i have a lot of good memories of me sebastian and his mom all yeah. right i never focused on the negative ones i know them i lived through it but i always been the one that goes for the positive memories the times that we were fishing on the dock in south georgia while we're sitting there and i've got a net over sebastian's rocker because sebastian's an infant and we're out there fishing at night with him oh <laughs> okay i still remember things that she probably doesn't like to remember like i had a pickup truck i was the only one that was working i was the only one we only had one vehicle and it started raining and i told her listen it's raining outside we have a kid you're gonna have to ride in the back you can't drive a stick shift if you could drive a stick, I'll ride in the back, but she couldn't drive a standard. Yeah. And it's like, I can't take Sebastian home and come back and pick you up. There's nobody at the house. I'm not leaving him. I mean, let's be, you know, common sense here. One of us has to ride in the back. Well, right after that, she got online and she was like, I found us a new truck. <laughs> All right. That's cool. You know, I still miss my little Toyota. You know, I, I remember taking her to the DMV to get her her driver's license for the first time. Oh. Okay. I didn't groom this lady. I get so tired this, of that. Yeah, that's this awful. lady didn't. She did not have the opportunities that children should have because of her father and the mistakes that her mother had made and the mistakes that her father made. She didn't get the opportunity, but as her husband, I was damned. She's going to get these opportunities. I bought. I helped her buy her first car. Spray my wrist, changing the brake pads on her first vehicle. You know, mm -hmm. people will make trash up because Absolutely. they're trashing people. You're right about that. 
right and then they're going to get butt hurt when they get a cease and desist because they're talking garbage and they're making me look bad which i don't need anybody to help me do that thank you well well i think calling somebody a predator yes that's more than talking shit that's a crime. <laughs> yeah that's a crime. they can't do that you know yeah so, so when I thought about that, I said, well, maybe that explains the cease and desist letters. I, I wouldn't let anybody say things like that. You know, that. when there's a YouTuber out there claiming that they made $20,000 off of my son. Oh, my God. Okay, that's gross. That is gross. They got a cease and desist, too, because you're nasty. You're using the that fact that my, oh my, my son's goodness. not here and telling people you made $20,000. Yeah. Not you're pretty cool. nasty. I, whoever. I, when a, who, when a oh YouTuber is, that is literally here in Tennessee sits there and asks me about handguns and I give him my personal opinion of what he should be looking for because of the performance and he wants to talk about how much money he has and I said well while you're at it if you're making that much why don't you buy two and give me one no the pistol don't cost two thousand dollars they're twenty five hundred dollars I've been saving up for four months before my son went missing to get it. Do you think I have that money now? No, I spent that money in doing other things. Right. Right. Dude, did I want it? I sure did. That was going to be a birthday present from me to me. Now I just want to find my son. I get it. I don't give a fuck about present. I give a fuck about being able to hold my baby boy. Hold on a minute. Can I? Can I? I want to clarify that right now. Are Are you saying that the person? brag to you about making that money yes oh my that is, god that's, I can't that's that. i'm sorry y'all that right there is awful it's like that you are horrific. such a piece of shit and to think that i come onto your thing and i think that you have my back and i tell you to be safe while you're out there doing what you're doing in other states because i've been taken advantage of by youtubers content creators more like copy clickers because they just want to take interviews and dissect them. Oh, did you see how his eyeball twitched? Oh, he keeps his hand up above. I've got nerve damage in my right arm, and I can't even make it into an MRI. I've been waiting for over a month, close to two, for an MRI. All right? Yeah. I'm. Uh, there's days that I can. I'll tell you now, I've got nerve damage because of the operation I had. Right? And it wasn't no fault of the hospital, of the searching it's just it's a possibility to, that could happen because of how close they was working to the nerves right well i've got nerve damage in my right on my right armpit sort of thing but it goes into my arm right i cannot reach into my cupboard no more because as soon as i reach the pain in my shoulder and my arm is unbelievable. I have to use a footstool now to get up into my cupboards. I can't lift my kettle with my right arm hang no more. So I have to use a jug to fill it up with water to put in my kettle because I cannot hold my kettle in my right hand. Right? Because it's, the weight is too much for my hand. I've got no... I've literally got... Um, it's like I've got some strength in my arm, right, but not the full strength in my arm no more, right? I get fluid build up in my wrist and hands through it. And yet people might say, well, you don't look like you, you deserve to be on disability. Um, you don't know what I go through every day. Every day, and now this is forever. This isn't just a a, a year thing or a two month thing or whatever. It's forever. So I feel for Seth. I did not pull myself out of my uh, bed. I I can tell. I mean, this is taking a toll. Yes, have, it's too have much. You, have you um? Would it? Would you be able to just sort of stay away from the whole YouTube stuff for a week or so, just to kind of give? I did. That's why I deleted my account. I deleted my account. I couldn't even watch any music or anything. Thank God, I'm old enough that I still have CDs. Yeah, 
bless your heart. It's not good for anybody. It's not, especially, listen, I, I, as a creator myself, I've said this before you've been on my panel and I'll say it again. When it comes to uh, cases with missing children or tra tragedies or anything like that, this place is accessible it is. for families. It's horrible. What they're doing to you, what's happened to many others, I, it's it's absolutely you gross. Know it is gross, but you know what? When you get people that are paying people to continue to do it, where is it? I mean, really, that... Right. Yes, Sebastian was only diagnosed last year with autism. But a child can show traits of autism from a I know people whose children have only just been diagnosed. And they've been fighting the system for years and years to get their child assessed. Right? My grandson, who I talk about a lot, I've got two grandsons. One is autist on the spectrum. Right? But he's, he functions like every other little boy. He, you know what I mean? He can play, he can ride bikes, he can do everything a normal young boy can do. It's just that he has his traits. He has to have his own time, his personal space. Like when we went there a few weeks back for, was it Easter? Easter, a couple of months back now, right? He said to his mum, he said, don't let him in my bedroom. Don't let him in my bedroom because that's his, his room. He's sanctuary, you know what I mean? Um, so, and when he was younger, he'd walk, he still does now, walk on his tippy toes. Now, I noticed when he was younger, it's when he did that, you know what his mum and dad would do? They'd just stop walking, just stop. And with that, he'd, he'd stop and his feet would go flat on the floor. And then they'd start walking again. And as soon as this he went up on his tippy toes, they'd stop, his feet would go flat again, and he'd start walking again. And they did that, and he, he's perfect, no, he's not perfect, he still has those moments where he'll walk on his toes or whatever. And he does need extra help at school, even though he's in mainstream school, right? He's in, in a mainstream class everything but he'll get that little bit extra help where my other grandson right he, he shows traits of autism i've seen him walking on his toes he's got no spatial awareness he can spin on a dime and with that when he was younger when he was a baby and he's just learning to walk and he'd spin on a dime sort of thing and he's smacking to the door frames, constantly smacking into door frames, right? Um, he's more, he's more rambunctious than my other grandson. He's more, of, he's a big lad. He's only seven, coming up to seven in October. My other grandson just turned seven today. The one I have on the weekends, he comes seven in October. And he's a big lad. He's in size. He's saying to me, living right back, these pajamas. He said, oh, they're getting a bit tight on me. I said, I'll do, I'll have to get you some more new ones. But they're still fitting fine. Right? It's just that he's got such a big bum. Right? And trying to get any trousers up over his bum is unbelievable. And you know what size these pajamas are? 10 to 11 years old, and he's only six, and he's in 10 to 11. Why? He doesn't like tags in clothing. He, even a little wallet, I gave him a little wallet oh, a couple of weeks ago for him to put his coins in, and inside were all these little tags. You know, he had me cut every little tag out as, and he put his fingers you know I could still feel some at grand and I'm going no, and I was really struggling to get to these tags to cut them out. He doesn't like tags on things. Um what else is there? Hats. 
it's really hard to get him to wear a hat in the winter. He, you know, um, he's very loud, but he likes. He has. Uh, he has got sensory issues. Yeah, it was, and I said, "This isn't right." He's spinning. He's literally he could spin like that, literally on a dime, as you say. But because he had no spatial awareness, he didn't realise there's door frames right next to him, and he'd spin round and bump straight to the door frame. And I'm going, "Oh my God, he's doing it again!" Every day he was doing it. I'm going. Ellis, stop doing this. You can't keep doing that. You're going to hurt yourself real bad. And so he gets a lot of help at school. You know, his nursery held him back big time. Big time. They kept saying, oh, we can, we can help him. We can, we, we can, uh, we've got what he needs here. They didn't have the uh, special education that he needed, right? He's now in primary. He's a year behind. He should be in P2, but they held him back a year. So he's in P1, right? Plus, because of his age as well, right? And uh, um, so he's in P1, and I'm not joking, He's come on leaps and bounds in that school. In fact, he loves school so much that I thought he might have a touch of diarrhea on Sunday. I said, if you if this still goes on, because we weren't sure if he had diarrhea or not, because he has these problems. And his mum said, so I said, he won't he'll want to go to school now. So if he was in nursery, he'd have gone, okay, I won't go to school. He'd be quite happy to stay off school because he didn't like nursery. And I knew he was being bullied at school. I knew it. But the school kept telling his mum and his dad, no, he's the one doing the bullying. Because he's a big lad and all his other kids in his class were small and petite. You know what I mean? But it wasn't. He was being bullied. He's being singled out constantly at nursery. But since he's gone into this primary, into the new school, into primary one, it's only a small class. It's all boys. Sometimes there's only four children in that class because my one lad had to go and have, a, going to have a, some a treatment at a hospital on Friday or Monday or today, sorry. So he wouldn't be in. But his mum's hoping he'll be back by Wednesday. Right? So, there was only going to be four children in class. I think the most I've got is six. I'll tell you, I, it, it used to scare the hell out of me. Every, I'm thinking, can we not just put some padding on these door frames? Like foam. You know what I mean? Because it was just unbelievable. And... He, he falls over, he runs around and he's so quick when he's running. He'll fall and he'll go flying and he'll hurt himself really bad. And then it's ridiculous what it, he's, but there's, he's so loving as well. But he does have a temper. He's got a, a, a really bad temper. And, um, but it's not all the time. But when it does come out, oh my God, you think, oh my God. And I just say to him, I say to the mum and the dad, leave him, leave him, let him calm down, let him calm down, let him go off and do what he's got to do and let him calm down. You know what I mean? Because while he's in that frame of mood, there's no speaking to him, no speaking to him at all. The more you speak to him, the, the worse he gets. So you just got to let him go and let him sort himself out in his own head, if you know what I mean. So 
It's not easy. People say to me the other day, they said, at the bus stop, because he's running around like mad at the bus stop. And uh, it's when I like to go up to Tesco's to get some stuffing. And he's running about and I'm saying, don't go too far, Ellis. Ellis, calm down. Ellis, 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 can you just be a bit quieter? You don't have to shout. Ellis, don't do this. El I'm going, oh, my God. And they go, they, they go to me, you got your hands full there. I go, it's 24-7. Even in his sleep, his body doesn't stop. He's, he kicks, he like, sometimes if he's in my bed, right, I get his elbow in my back or his leg in my back or his knee in my back. Or, it's, always, it's always on the go. His body, his brain isn't shutting down fully. His brain is constantly on the go. So, and we've been fighting now for, since he was, what, three? To get him assessed. And he's six. And we're still waiting. He's now on the waiting list. And he's only got that because of this school where he's at. That the the health the uh, the health is to there, and his his class teacher has worked together to get this get him on the waiting list. Right, well, not the health is to. I don't think it's the health is to. I think I'm not sure because the health is to he had before. She was. Crap. Absolutely crap. I hated her. One day, the health visitor come, right, and she come to see Olivia this time, because Olivia was only a baby. Ellis come in, realised who was in the living room, and went, OK, I'm going back to my room. Left the living room and went in his bedroom and shut his bedroom door. He didn't want nothing to do with that health visitor. And yet this health visitor kept saying, Oh, but your son likes me. Does he how? He'll lock him in himself. He shuts his bedroom door when he knows you're there. And he'll only come out when you've gone. So right up until he went to junior school, he was being held back because no one was listening to his mum or his dad. They just had their own agenda. That he was a bully. He was... He doesn't need this help. He hasn't got this wrong with him. You know what I mean? He's just a bully. He's just spoiled. He's just had everything his own way. No, he hasn't had everything his own way. He isn't spoiled. Well, he's probably spoiled by me. But if he steps out of line, if he's naughty, then I'll speak to him. And I'll say, look, you cannot do this. Like, he hits out all the time. Like, when he's playing tig or tag. But when he hits, it's not like a little tap. It really hurts when he does it. I'm going, Ellis, you can't do that. You're hurting people. If you're hurting me, then what are you doing to your sister and to your friends at school? You know what I mean? This is why you get in trouble at school. This is why you have a time out for five minutes at school. Because you're hurting your classmates. But you see, the teachers work with him because they know each child are, is individual in that class. They've all got their own different abilities and whatever, right? And they take it day by day. One day could have a good day, next day could have a bad day, and they deal with it as it comes. They don't single him out. When he was at nursery, they wouldn't take him on any day trips. We found this out because one day we've gone to pick him up and I said, well, what did you do at nursery today? Oh, I helped the teachers clean up, tidy up. I went, okay. Then we found out on their page they had that they'd been to town, to the city centre. So Simon and his Trace and the mum and dad asked him about that. Oh, no, that wasn't his, his class. That was another class. No, it wasn't. That was the day Ellis was stuck at, left at school with the teachers and was helping the teachers clean up while every other child in his class went into town. No, he doesn't get tired during Well, he does, but he won't sleep. 
very rarely does he sleep. He does sleep on the night time. Don't get me wrong, he does sleep. But his, constant, his body is constantly moving. His arms, his legs, everything. You know what I mean? His constant, his body just, 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 just doesn't want to shut down. If you can understand it, like the motion wise of it. His arms are going, his legs are going. And I dread it now when I get, when, if he falls asleep in my bed. Because I go in and he cocoons himself in my duvet. So I've got no duvet. So luckily I've got a throw that I've got over the bed. And I love this throw because it's so, so warm and soft. So I just, I just sleep under that. Right? But otherwise, his, his, his body is just moving constantly. So... It's Sebastian was probably showing traits way before he got diagnosed, and his dad had those dogs to work with Sebastian. It's like I had, I've got Bobby the cat. I got that for Ellis and Olivia, right? But the cat was fine, but then all of a sudden last year the cat started to attack the mother, and I mean. Attacker, she's still got scars on her arms from where the cat would literally go for her with his claws out and scratch down her arm and bite her and everything. She was on antibiotics twice through it. So I said, Do I bring the cat here? I'll have him here. Since he's been here with my cat Toby, they're both brothers, they came from the same mother, they've been perfect. They have their little spats. But he hasn't had a go at me, and I've even stared that cat out when he's done something wrong. I've gone up to him, eye to eye, i have go, you! And I've stared at him, and you know what that cat has done? My son said, oh, don't do that, he'll probably attack you. No, you know what that cat did? Walked away, because he knew he was in the wrong. I stood firm with him, and he walked away. But... I said, no, I'll have to cut here because at least then Ellis and Olivia will still see Bobby when they come and visit. You know what I mean? So I've got the cat here. It's it's still Ellis's and Olivia's, but... It's, you can't blame them. People want to pay for the drama. They're like, this is better than, you know, cable TV. It's sad. And it's, it's like, so the only difference is, this is real life. This isn't law and order. You know, this is literally... Somebody's like, well, Seth, I mean, you know, on mainstream TV, the, the reality TV shows, people flock to that, right? I don't, I don't have TV. I had Netflix. That's about it. Now I don't well, even have that. I actually yeah. haven't had a TV subscription. I stopped watching TV when my doctor told me you need to stop watching the news. Yeah. The news is affecting your health. Absolutely. And that was back in 2011. Yes. And they, so I was uh, like, I tell you what, that's 120 bucks that can be put towards something else. Absolutely agree. But but the reality TV where they take a group of people don't know each other, put them in a house together, and then they add a bunch of alcohol, and then they film and, and watch as these people just go through their day fighting <laughs> and being ugly. Um, there's a certain element of our population today mm -hmm. that what they like. And I, I I'd just like to say thank you to everyone being here tonight and sticking with me tonight. This is a long live, but I just want to get through this. I don't think he's on to the end. Oh, I'm on 47. I'll just check. No, it's not on to the end. Right, so let's get back to 147. Really like, you know, enjoy the that type of banner. and. Oh, it's awful. It is. It is. And and I, the only thing that you can do, Seth, is to insulate yourself from it and just not watch it. Don't go there. Don't listen. They're, you're not going to control these people. They are, they are, there's, I, we, we sat, Brittany can tell you, we sat and watched for about two years as Chris Watts, uh, Chris Watts' wife, Shanann yeah. Rizek, her parents hired attorneys. They sent, they sent 
uh, cease and desist to YouTube. They tried to sue YouTube, individual creators, just trying to make people stop with the nonsense. And and they could never they could never get it to happen. And it, got- the drama will never stop because there's always people that are craving the drama. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's true. As creators, you guys can limit it because you can. Yeah, you can limit right. the drama. That stuff's not allowed here. If you keep it up, you can go somewhere else because you won't be allowed here. I mean, yeah. it, that's just the way it is. Somebody was wanting to know about me leaving my son at home when he yeah. was here. My son was responsible. Have you ever known? Okay, my son was never an eloper. He never eloped. He never ran out, ran away, no nothing. Besides the fact that my neighbors all around know my son and think that he's the he's a, the wonderfulest child they've ever met. Oh, well, that's it. If he's going to run away, right? If for any reason he's going to run away, don't you think he'd run away from his dad's when his dad's at work? You know what I mean? When he's at home, on his own, that's his time to go. Okay. I mean, little darling. My neighbor has stated that she has watched him come out this door and stand in the driveway, and she was out here. And he was like, hi, how you doing? She's like, hey, what are you up to? And he was like, my dad will be home in about seven minutes. Aww. <laughs> and she's like, how do you know? And he was like, because I know what time it is. My dad's never late when he's coming home from work. He'll Aww. be home in about seven minutes. And she's like, oh, he was like, I come home. He's already got coffee made and everything. And it's like, how'd you know I was coming home early? He was like, I just knew you were coming home, dad. So sweet. So I sweet. made that promise to him. I'm going to work, son. I'll call you later on tonight. Because I'd call him from the jail. Because I can't have my cell phone in there. All right. So I would call his cell phone from the jail. And I would see how he was doing. He never had a reason to leave. I hate this word. I I really hate this word. But the kid had plenty of food and snacks in this house for him. All right. And when I say snacks, I'm talking about he's got yogurt cups, fruit cups, everything in the fridge, carrots, celery, you know, peanut butter. Boy knows how to cook. Does he, you know, hot pot? Oh, snacks. Snacks in my house is a drawer, bottom drawer, full of crisps and biscuits. And a packet of biscuits will be gone in no time with my grandson. And I mean a whole packet. And then he's still hungry. Pockets, burritos, you name it in the freezer because he knows how to use the microwave. And then he, if I was here, he would cook on the stove. Because that's what I was teaching him to do. I was teaching him to be independent for himself. Yeah. Wow. You have to let them grow if they're ever going to be able to fly on their own. How uh, can I just ask uh, for just for clarification and listen, I don't I'm not judging you at all because I think you you love your son and there's no doubt in my mind. I don't question it. Uh, but was did you have to work overnight or was it during the day? I worked overnight. OK. And he did fine. That's good. I mean, listen, I have a child on the spectrum and something I can tell y'all about him. Sebastian was 15. They're perfectionists. Was Sebastian a perfectionist? Did he have to do things the right way and, uh, you know, very punctual? I'm just curious. Not really following the question, but Sebastian did what Sebastian knew he needed to do. Right. So usually when, it, you know, a lot, I, just, I don't want to say that because it's not fair, but in the case. I'll tell you what, I've I'd come home and his bed ain't made. Did he make his bed like he was <laughs> supposed that. to? No. I come home, be like, Sebastian, did you brush your teeth last night before you went to bed? Uh, I'm going to take that as a no. Go brush your teeth. It's a typical teenager. <laughs> yeah, he's a teenager. He's going to rebel. Welcome right. to being, you know, a parent of a teenager. Certain things you have to do. Certain things you just look over. Certain things you have to remind them of. All right? Well, it was just that. I, I was would, happy. The difference being is we most teenagers, they know they have to brush the teeth before they go to bed, but they just don't. Right? Where with Sebastian, it's like, yeah, he knows he has to do something, but it doesn't come into his logic of thinking, oh, right, I'm going to bed now, I best go and brush my teeth. That doesn't come into his logic. Right? Where with most teenagers is, oh, I'm going to bed now. Oh, I'm not going to bother brushing my teeth tonight. I'll do it in the morning. Right? We've, it's a different way of thinking with Sebastian. 
with Sebastian. It's like, it's not, oh, I best go and brush my teeth. He doesn't even think about brushing his teeth. I'm just going to go to bed. Right, even though he knows there's probably something he's got to do before he goes to bed, he just doesn't realise what it is. Sort of thing, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He made sure that his room was maintained. There you go. And he knew how to wash his own laundry. Talking about him, because you guys don't know him. You guys don't really know me. But if you're going to sit there and talk down about my son or talk down to me, you're with the drama. I can't have it. So Jenny P., know what I'm talking about, and uh, if I'm a sad-ass individual, True. what does that make you for not knowing what I'm True. speaking True. about? See, that's part of the drama, Jenny. Yeah, that's, You don't know that's... who I'm speaking about. I haven't stated everybody that I sent a cease and desist to. And, I stated I sent it to six people. And Jenny P., who, in the, who are you to, to say to someone who's lost their child, who is their child is gone, who the hell do you think you are calling them a sad ass person? What do you, I, I can't even imagine a world mm -hmm. like that. Have nope. you tried to put yourself in his shoes for about two seconds? I can't even imagine the panic that a person would have not knowing where their child is and just trying anything to try to figure out even what direction to go in. What does that mean? You sad ass individual. You right. are well, I'm sorry, but just before Christmas, last Christmas, we was at the turning on at some Christmas lights in another town by us, right? And it was a good night. It was really good. And we're standing at the stage, and my grandson was at the front. I could see him where he was, and he just kept turning around. And I go, turn around, because I've got my camera videoing what's going on, but I'm watching him as well. He then goes with his mum to go to the toilet. He comes back and he goes to the front by the stage again. She turns around to talk to Simon. And Simon went, oh, where's Ellis? He said, at the stage. And when we've looked, he's not there. So my heart's pounding by now. Just the thought is not there. So I said to the mum, you stay with Olivia. She's in the push chase. Just stay there. Simon went one way round to that side of the stage and I went the other. It wasn't a big stage, right? Couldn't find him along the front anywhere. So we'd come back, met each other and then split. And I went one way into the crowd. He went the other. We met back up. I said, that's it. I'm, I'm going to let them know on the stage they can give a call out. And as soon as they give a call out, the police will come forward and start looking, right? Well, we just got to the stage and I was just about to tell him and I couldn't even tell him what he was wearing because my heart was literally leaping out of my chest. I felt sick. I felt, you, you name it, I felt it, right? Now, this is my grandson, not my son, my grandson. And all of a sudden, we took this bloke covering. He said, hold on a minute, hold on. He said, is that your son? I said, yeah, that's my son. He said, he's just gone over there. I think he's found him. And with that, he's brought my grandson back with him. My grandson had literally walked past us in the crowd, looking for us. But he'd walked past us, gone into the crowd, but then made his way back to the stage. Right? So he did the right thing. He made his way back to the stage where my son found him. But I'm not joking. Five minutes, five minutes, and it was pure terror in my, I've never felt such terror in all my life. I only consider Sebastian ran away before, but after hearing him, I now consider, no, unless he was able to leave no scent, unless someone was able to tell him, look, if you do this, put this on your feet, it won't leave a scent. You know what I mean? So, but I can't see him going out the house with no shoes on. That's the only thing that stops me from saying he went, he was took by a predator. 
And the only way he would go out of the house without no shoes on is if he was carried out of that house. But honest, that five minutes. And then, after, literally five minutes later, they put a call out for another young girl. Now, this is the description we got. They told us her age. And she's wearing a pink coat. Dark hair, pink coat. And Ellis come with me to have a look for her. Right? You know what my grandson said to me when we was looking? We'd only been looking a couple of minutes. He said, Right, and I went, yeah, see. All the girls are wearing pink coats. Which they were. Even my granddaughter. And I think the little girl who went missing, her name was Olivia. And my granddaughter's name's Olivia. And she was wearing a pink coat. All the girls were wearing these pink jackets or coats. And I went, I stood there. And I looked around. I said, you know what, Ellis? You're right. They are. How are we supposed to know if this is... You know what I mean? So I thought, right, you've got to look for someone who probably struggling, pulling away from someone. You know what I mean? And I'm not joking. Before me and Simon, my son, went looking for her and Ellis, the police were out there. They grouped up, about four or five of them had grouped up, and they split off and went off in different directions. So... Reflecting yourself to be a sad ass individual. Well, that's I'm done, Brittany, sorry no, no, that. tell it that mods. I want zero tolerance for tonight because that right there. I, norm, I tell my mods to let and unless still oh, have well. freedom of speech, but not like that. That shit ain't okay at all. And and, no. and there's one other one. Audis, audacity. Um, I just get the feeling that if the other parent left him that long, there would be an outrage. Katie knew what I did. She knows how long my shifts are. She knows that I work nights and I work twelve hour shifts. She knew everything before she came up, before we even agreed to that. Well, here's the thing, too. I'm listening to what Seth and says. Katie, it, Katie, Sebastian would get off at 3 o'clock, and Katie wouldn't get home until 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening. So if you think that me leaving him for 12 hours while I go to work at night, she left him at home alone as well during yeah, the day. I remember hearing right? Chris say He's that. He's 15 years old. No, we communicated about that because one of the things that I wanted her to make sure that she understood is that I work 12-hour shifts. Sometimes I have to stay over. It's mandated, and I have to pull 16-hour shifts because we're shorthanded. we got to have officers there for the inmates. And she was completely aware of this. See, there was communication. There was co-parenting when it came to Sebastian. It wasn't the best in the world, but at least both of us tried. Well, one thing that I actually uh, – that sticks out for me – with everything, and I've tried to even tell everybody, what, regardless of what you believe, that you can't deny that even Chris and Katie themselves Possible. have spoke very highly Possible. of Seth's relationship with Sebastian. Yeah. You know, but they said that if uh, if Sebastian was in sports, you bet his father would be on. Sorry, my internet playing up for some reason. But I... It just gets me from what that neighbour was saying about how all the lights went out at 11.30 and then you see they saw a silhouette in the window. Right? Why would she be standing in the window in the dark? You turn the lights off as you go to bed. Can you hear my cat in the background? crying on the front row you know i don't know what happened seth if you if you want to come back in i'll drop the link to you again um y'all let's be respectful y'all it's, it's easy to hear he's going through some things i mean yeah. it, it, i don't think he just come back up <laughs> you feel like you're thinking about it okay you, hold on i'm no 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 niecy uh -uh. no i'm gonna leave at that no, see that that's the kind of stuff that I don't like because how can you say that? Seth saw Sebastian maybe 24 times a year. Let that sink in. Can I ask what you get from coming around saying things like that? 
You don't know that. How do you know that? I want you to tell me how you know that. And then after you tell me, you you like, I love when people think they know somebody better than the person knows themselves. Yeah. Um, Chris Proudfoot, because I'm pretty sure you probably support him. <laughs> if you don't want to believe what nobody else believes, says you can listen to him. He flat out said it with his own mouth that Seth gets Sebastian at different times, that it's not on a set schedule, that he might go to his dad's and stay four or five days at a time. And that any time that Sebastian wanted to go to his dad's, he could go. It didn't matter if it was the middle of the week or it was a weekend. He would go to his dad. Think about it. Sebastian staying at home while his dad works, that's a weekday. He's got the weekends off. He was at his dad's more than just the weekends. That's yeah. not right. There's this narrative, Jules. I don't know if you've seen it. Where, where especially one certain person, cre I shouldn't even call her a creator. She's not worthy of the name. Is pushing this narrative that's, that Seth is a, an absentee father and that's that he bullshit. didn't know Sebastian. It makes me sick. That's bullshit. What do these people get from doing that? They want, like, Chris, for profit. They want Chris for profit on their channel. They want to get the clicks and views. Oh, yeah. And even like, even with my disgust of Chris Proudfoot, I wouldn't sit here and like degrade him and Katie like that. Like the yeah, they these pretty people get personal and go for the throat. Yep, it's horrible. Uh, Mama Bear, I don't think so. Well, you see, even if I did have a big channel, I couldn't have Chris on my channel. I couldn't. I know what you said about like not being biased. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you're looking for someone at something outside, then you're standing in the dark, don't you, look out? So why would you be standing in the dark looking out the window at 11.30 at night when she's supposed to be on the phone with Chris? Right? She said Sebastian went to bed at 9, 10 o'clock, she heard your thoughts. Finally, that come out later, later, later. Right, she heard your thoughts. She called through to him and he said, no, mum. She said, right, whatever you're doing, get to sleep. She didn't go and check on him. That was at 10 o'clock. And then 12 o'clock, she gets up, puts the dogs in the cage and goes to bed. Now, we're hearing his bedroom light was on at 11. Right? She gone into the kitchen to get a drink or whatever. She heard a noise and that's when she shouted through what she did, whatever. Right? And then at eleven thirty all the lights go off. And so she's going to bed. But then they see a silhouette in the window. Now yeah, I've turned my lights off if I when I've been in a house and you want to see what's going on, but you don't want anyone to see you, right? You turn your lights off, right? So I've done that. So why would she be doing that? Why would she be standing in front of a window at eleven thirty at night after all the lights have gone off? Hmm. When she's supposed to be, oh, well, now she's even, even more added. If that is true, that's added even more to what she's capable of. Because she's capable of sleeping from 10 to 12. Sleeping, reading a book, a coursework book, talking to Chris on the phone while sleeping and reading a book. And also standing at the window in the pitch dark. Yeah, that's what I've done, you know what I mean? I've turned off when I was in a house. I've turned off all my lights if I've heard any noise outside. But I'll tell you something else that really freaked me out, right? When I lived in Birmingham, we had this house, right? And my husband was working nights. And... I get. I was going to bed about tenish at the time then, because I knew I got to get up early in the morning to see two two my kids. And so I've gone out into the kitchen, opened the back door, 
let my dog out. Right, just shut the back door, not locked it, just shut it. Right. Uh, went to the bathroom, sorted myself out, come back, stood at my back door and I was calling the dog. Now, I, I hadn't got a big back, a big back garden, I hadn't. But it was big enough for what we needed. And I was calling my dog and I was going, come on, and I couldn't see nothing. I couldn't see where the dog was. Then all of a sudden, I seen my dog walking out, backing away from the, because we had a shed to the, where the kitchen door was, it was on the left-hand side. The shed was on the left-hand side of the kitchen door. And all of a sudden, I've just seen my dog backing away. Like, you know when you say to a dog, shush, shush, go, go, and the dog backs off, yeah? Something like that, who's backing away from the shed door. I thought nothing of it. Dog come in. I've locked the door up, turned my lights off, gone to bed. Go up the next morning, and I've gone in the kitchen, and I've stood at my sink, and I went, and my husband had not long come in from work. And I went, babe, have you been out in the back garden at all this morning since you come home? He went, no. I said, so you've not been to the shed? He went, no. I said, well, the shed door's all open. Now, I know we used to padlock that shed. Padlock it, because we had bikes in there. You name it, it was padlocked. Right? We've gone out, and there's an old trolley. You know them trolleys, shopping trolleys you had? There's one of them that was in my shed. That was by the shed door. I went, oh, my God. So someone broke into the shed. Luckily, the insurance we had, our contents insurance, covered our shed, believe it or not. It covered our shed contents. But nothing got took. Because I think when my dog went out, it disturbed them. Right? So I so I so like say shh. Go away, go away. Now, it must have been something, someone he knew, because if it was someone he didn't know, he would have barked. He didn't bark. So, straight away, when I realised my shed had been broken into, I knew it was someone who knew us, the family, the dog, right? But luckily, nothing had been stolen, right? The bikes were still there, everything. And I think what they were planning on doing was using the trolley to put little things in there. I don't know. Anything they could get in that trolley. But because the dog come, they had to go. Right? They just left it. And that freaked me out. Every night then when I put the dog out, I'd be going, we need to get lights out here, Vince. Why? Because of what happened like, with the shed, he went, okay. So, we did get lights put out in the garden, right? Uh, but not, like, security lights. It's like, um, lights, oh, God, I do explain them. Um, there was lights, but not, like, security, like, gave out. Big, they didn't go off automatically. They only went off if we hit the switch or something like that. Right, and um, so every night then when I put the dog out, I'd hit the switch on so the light would come up in the garden. But it used to terrify me. Right. What you say, many reasons. What if she was on phone and just paused for some reason? I've walked around the house and stopped in a spot while on phone. Say, so, but don't forget she's also sleeping. I'm reading a book, some coursework book. She's sleeping and reading a book as well. <laughs> we don't know what is true. Well, the one thing we do know is true, the phone call, because that's being checked by the police. Why? Right? I've never stood outside my house to see if any celebrities would show in my window with lights off. She may have never checked outside the house to see what can be seen from exactly. You don't think about it, do you? Even when I had my lights turned off, I'd be hiding up the corner of my window sort of thing 
so they couldn't so I wouldn't be standing right in front of the window I'd be what we call in England the UK a curtain twitcher you just pull your curtains back a little bit to see what's going on right but without the lights on we call them curtain twitchers anyway so um But no, it scared me, that did. The fact that it was someone who knew us as a family had the nerve to come into onto my property, into my garden, and try and steal stuff from out of my shed. Right? And I thought, you know what? I'm not having everyone. everyone. Because my house was like New Street. New Street Station is a station in... Birmingham, right? It's a train station. It's a big train station, right? So I always refer to my house being like New Street Station. There's people, Simon and his friends coming and going, D and your friends coming and going. You know what I mean? It was like that. From the moment I come home from school to the moment I had him in on the night time. And even in the summer, I let them play out, stay out later but it was in the back garden there wasn't allowed out the front come eight o'clock on the night they, they could stay out a bit later in the summer holidays or on a weekend in the summer but it had to be in the back garden not out the front they had to be in the back garden so it just upset me that someone we know who knew the dog had come into our onto our property to try and steal stuff off us. But they didn't get away with anything because they got disturbed. But why did they come running out at me, you know what I mean, from beyond that shed? Because the door was hitting. You couldn't see the front of the shed unless the door was swung open. And that's why I knew the shed it was open because the shed door was swung open in the morning. But you couldn't see the front of my shed from the kitchen door. You could see the side of the shed, you could see the back of the shed, but you couldn't see the front. And it just scared the life out of me, thinking, what if they come running out at me? What if they had a knife on them come running out at me? I've got two kids upstairs, you know what I mean? And a dog that obviously isn't going to go for them because he knows them, because he's not barked. He only barked at strangers. So it's just scary. So, but that silhouette, if it's true what is being said, that she, if what she said in that first interview is true, that she was asleep, you know, don't forget she even told a neighbour that she was sleeping and she woke up at half 11 or 11 or something like that. And Sebastian was still awake. We know everything isn't true, but silhouette and call is true. So the sleeping isn't true and, you, and irrelevant. Yeah, we know. I don't think she was sleeping. I think she's just said that she was sleeping to the police. Now, this is what I'm saying. If she told the police she was sleeping, she fell asleep at 10 o'clock, right? Yeah? And then... They've seen that interview. No, and then they've got their phone record, sorry, and seeing, oh, John, three hour phone call from 9 till 9 30 or whatever, two and a half hour phone call from 9 30 till 12. Hold oh, on. She said she was sleeping at 10. So that's, I think they've gone back to her and said, look, there's an inconsistency here. You told us she was sleeping at 10, but we've got you on record as being on a phone call from half nine till 12. You know what I mean? So that's when they're coming and saying, oh yeah, that's when she wasn't sleeping, she just kept falling asleep while on the phone call, and that's why I told her at 12 o'clock to go to bed. 
She hacked my cat to the place she was asleep. Right? Why would she need to make out to the police that she was sleeping at 10 o'clock till half 11 or 10 o'clock till 12? Why? And why does she have to make out, make it very clear that she went to bed at 12 o'clock and she, and yet I fell asleep? You know what I mean? Of course I fell asleep. She had to make it very clear that she went to bed at 12 o'clock. Why? You know what I mean? So because of that sleep thing fell through at 10 o'clock, that's when she's thinking, hold on, I, they need proof of life. I'll just tell them I heard a thud. And that is, I said to date to him and he spoke back to me. That's pr proof of life. You know what I mean? I think he did come back to the house with them. Right? Whether he put the trash out is another thing. Possibly. We don't know because it's just a, a silhouette. It's just, it's just so dark you can't tell who it is. Right? So I think he did come home. Because if... If they, something had happened in the car, say, on the way home from the Texas Roadhouse, or they... They met up with someone and they they passed him out onto someone else. Why would they take his shoes off? Her alibi, that's when whatever happened did occur. Yeah, so her alibi is from what? Half nine till twelve and then at twelve o'clock she's in bed. Till six. That's her alibi. Her alibi is that three hour phone call. And then she went to bed at 12. And of course I went to sleep. Well, I should hope so if she went to bed. Well, but saying that, I can go to bed and I don't always go to sleep. So, anyway. I'm going to leave it at that. Because this is going on for... Way too long. Way too long. Four hours. Oh my lord. I need to get off here and go to bed. Right. As I said, I'm back tomorrow. I'm doing a live in the afternoon about... Oh, who is it? I can't think of the names. I did write it down. But you watch, I won't be able to find it now. So much is going on since I spit them. Anyway, it's about two lads. Both gone missing, both autistic. Okay? Uh, I think they're 11 or 13 years old, something like that, 12 or 13 or 11 and 13. So I'm doing a live tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. UK time, which is what, 3, 12, 10 a.m., wherever you are. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing a live tomorrow night. I might not. I, might, I don't know yet. See what happens. Um... I don't know. Uh, Tuesday night, Tuesday night. No, I don't think I'll be doing live. If I will, you'll know because you'll get a notification. Plus, I'll I'll set it up in the morning if I'm doing a live. Anyway, so I'd just like to say. What video is that, SG? The video of the neighbours. I don't know. They've got all the special technical stuff, haven't they, to work to clean up 
videos and whatever. But if it's pitch black, I don't see how I can clean it up much more. You know what I mean? I really don't. But we really need to know proof of life. And that's why I said that thud didn't happen. Right? I don't believe that thud. I don't. Because I don't believe a mother could be so heartless knowing her son has got that fluid on his brain or whatever and if he hits that, could kill him. Hearing a thud and thinking he's fell out of bed, well, I'm sorry, but if I've got a child with that condition, yeah, If I've got a child with that condition, I would be up straight away. In that, you okay? Did you just bump your head? You know what I mean? My grandson, when he sleeps in my bed, he didn't do it this weekend. He didn't fall out. But nine times out of ten, he'll fall out of my bed, and my bed's quite high. Right? And I feel him going. I feel him falling out of the bed. That's how light a sleeper I am. Because I actually feel him going out, but I can't grab him quick enough to stop him from falling. But I feel it. Right? And I go, you okay? I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm okay. And he jumps back up, gets into bed. And goes, I say, but before he gets to sleep, I say, did you hit your head? No. Did you hurt your arm? Or your leg, or your side. Well, I hurt my arm, or I hurt my leg. Okay. Do you want me to rub it? No, it's okay. You know what I mean? I can't believe she did anything intentionally, no. I can't believe that. That's why... I think something happened before 10pm. Before 10pm. Before 9 p.m., I'd say. Something happened before 9 p.m. Because, or 9 30, because it rang about 9 30, 9 40, something. She phoned him, or he phoned her. So, something happened between them getting home and 9 30. Perhaps he didn't want to go to bed at 9 o'clock like she wanted to. Perhaps there was a bit of a tip for tack, right, and he's probably, you heard him say, Seth say, he went for him once, and he put his hand out to stop him, because he fell over a toy, tripped over some toy, and he was going towards the door, and he put his hand in the way, to stop him from hitting his head on the door, could that have happened with Katie, you know what I mean, but then he stood up, everything seemed fine, he's going to sleep, and this, I think something happened between, before that phone call, before the phone call. Because then, that phone call was at, like, her uh, alibi. Oh, well, I was on the phone. Oh, yeah, I did hear him at 10 o'clock. Right? But, um, I'd like to see the phone records to know if it was a regular occurrence this three-hour phone call. Just a bit of coincidence, it's three hours, 37 minutes from door to door to where he works, from home to where he works. Or oh, stays, I should say. Where he stays. So, hang on, like coming out, you could probably get home a bit quicker than three hours. Right? Probably push the speed limit a little bit more. But I do believe that neighbour on the corner with the camera. Saying there's two instances. One with their lights and a car on the corner. Right? And then the garbage truck come. And then Katie leaves, then the school bus goes up the road. 
Yeah. So I do believe that neighbour. I don't think we're seeing the whole video at all. I don't think where we just I know that video they put out wasn't the whole video. I wouldn't even say it's the corner of that video. I'd say it was like the middle of that video where the lights was. Because the corner would be the corner of her camera, her screen, would be where the road ends. Being as she caught a car sitting there. Now, why would a car be sitting there at half three, four o'clock ish, or four, four thirty ish? It wasn't an Uber. Right. So that has brought the lights thing back. By her saying that, you're going to have people talking about that light situation again. But I don't think that video, even if you see the full video, we're not going to give it all. We're not. That thing with the lights is like the centre of that video. The centre of the screen. But we can talk about that in other night. But I w I'm not going to trash uh, Seth on here. Because he's the only one out of the three parents that has been out there looking. Right? Even when, like, the first day he didn't probably go out looking. Right? Because he's wanting to know what was happening, what had happened, what was being said. He said he sat there watching everyone, their behaviour, what they were saying. You know what I mean? He's watching their behaviour and everything the first day. And he didn't stop overnight. He'd come back the next morning. So he was there for three days. And that's when he started going out. He'd go out. He'd go up to the command centre because I remember them saying... He'd go up to the command centre and the command, that head guy said, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be in here. He said, it's my son who's missing. You know what I mean? Why shouldn't he be in there to see where you're searching? Why shouldn't he? Not as if he's got a oh, big secret that like you've searched that canal over there or big secret you searched that like wood, wooded area there. That isn't a big secret. You put it on flipping Nick Berry's channel. You know what I mean? So, he was up there every day. So that's where he was going the Monday, the Tuesday. And then he said he was getting in his car and driving around shouting Sebastian's name because he couldn't get out and search. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> KP and CP did contribute to blip boards. Yep, they did. Right? So, but they're not doing the blip boards no more, are they? Why haven't they been out searching? Okay, they said one stay at home. One, there's two parents in that house. Why couldn't you? Chris have gone out looking, or Chris stay at home and Katie go out looking. Once that search has been scaled back, why couldn't they go out looking? When the search was going on, why couldn't they, one of them, go out putting post their flyers up? You know what I mean? Didn't take two to put two people to put flyers up. One person. Right, why can't I do that? Oh, because law enforcement not to, told them not to go out. It's your son. Hal will freeze over ten times before the police would tell me what to do. They said, we don't want you searching here or there. I go, well, I'm not going to search there, then I'm going to search over there. You know what I mean? I'll be over there somewhere. You're not over there, so I'll be over there. 
Are they still up? The blip bugs are still up. Because uh, Duchess was doing that, wasn't she? She was sorting all that out. So, but I couldn't have sub I couldn't have Chris on. If I had a big pack, if I had a one of the largest channels going, I couldn't have that guy on my show. I couldn't. I could have Katie up here because I do feel for her. Because at the end of the day, is her son, and I I don't want to think. That she could hurt her son. I really don't. But she's holding back on something. And why? Why is she holding back? If there was an accident, why didn't she just say so at the beginning? Yeah. He don't want... Right? She was going at that... Caravan Park, right? The first time they left, yeah? She went down there because they did the Nancy Grace interview down there. And Nancy Grace said, will you be going home? She said, I will be, but I don't know when. Right? Well, it just so happened, like, literally about two days later, she came home. What happened when she came home? TBI called her and set into the office, into the headquarters. And that's when Seth saw the video of Katie walking out the state road, Texas Roadhouse with Sebastian. Right? And then all of a sudden, whoop, Katie's back down to the caravan park. Blip bugs. Are those like the big bugs you see on your highways that uh, show a certain picture for so so many seconds or a minute or so? Or are they just a billboard which is there, static? Well, I've been going over the interviews. And I can't take no more of his voice. I couldn't. I had to. I didn't do. I didn't listen to Nyong yesterday, and I haven't listened to Nyong to Nyong today. I couldn't listen to his voice so, because literally, from last week, the beginning of last week, the week, the weekend before, and that all last week, I've been going through their interviews, and I've been typing it up what they've been saying, and. So that I can see who said what and everything. You know what I mean? I've got the names where, like, Katie said blah, Chris said, blah. you know what I mean? And it got, it's, I thought, no, I can't do it no more. I can't do it. I've managed to get through two videos, two lives. I'm on my third one, which was Smiley's one. But I know there's another Duchess one. Duchess is going to with them. And there's the, um, there's another one before Smiley, I believe. No. I've got Chronicles of Olivia and Duchess one. The first one with Duchess and the one with Chronicles of Olivia. But that's a good thing. I'm glad they're still up. I'm glad they're still up. So... And I can believe what the woman said about people saying, so why don't you have one of them billboards, them little board things in your garden to let people know? We don't need to know. They live there. They know what happened. You know what I mean? It's only strangers that are coming into the area to be nosy. That don't know what ha what's actually happened. So why do they need to have them boards up in their gardens? They don't. They could probably have one by the entrance of that, where they live, of that main road, like on the main road part, probably put one there, but they don't need one in all the gardens. 
You know what I mean? They need to keep the flyers being put up though. So, because people are saying the flyers are disappearing again. Flyers are disappearing again. So, I'm glad about that though, about the bleeps. So, is Clooming at e using the money she gets off her YouTube channel to do that? Because she must be getting some money in as well from doing her channels with having Chris up there and everything. So, anyway, I've now been on here nearly five hours. I'm tired and I need to get my medication and go to bed. So, with that, thank you everyone for being here. Please like the video, share it. If you're on Twitter, leave me a heart, show me some love. Leave me a comment. I haven't been on there for a few days, but I will be getting onto Twitter tomorrow to check all that out. So, leave me a comment. I do reply to all comments. I really do. <coughs> So, until then, good night.